Hello, listening people. Hey, hey. I'm Ryan. I'm Bartek. And you're listening to Spin Polish Presents Unappreciated Masterpieces. And Bartek, what? Why are we called Spin Polish? Um, let me just type it up on Wikipedia. Uh, Spit and Polish are called Spit and Polish because it is a clever play on the phrase to spit and polish something, as in to make it shiny, and also because they can make that funny, incredibly good joke funny. Um, ne- never stop we are always funny. spitting and we are both Polish. Yes. That's it's what Wikipedia always says. because we're spitting. We're... If it was really Wikipedia, there would be like a sub article that would be like, you know, many do not know the exact answer oh, to oh, why well, they're to be Polish. Fair, to be, this, was, this was simple English Wikipedia. <laughs> simple English. So it's because we're always spitting and we both happen to be Polish. And you are listening to Unappreciated Masterpieces. What do we do on Unappreciated Masterpieces? Good question, audience. Look it up on Wikipedia, Ryan. Look it up. What we do is we do feature-length audio commentaries for movies that seemingly don't deserve a commentary. But that's where the seemingly comes in, because in fact, Mm. they do deserve a commentary. We pick out movies that have been forgotten or otherwise unappreciated by the general masses. They're movies that may not be completely forgotten, but they are ones that are not on the tip of everybody's tongues. They're movies that when we say the titles of them, you'll be like... Oh, yeah, and you'll think to yourself, why does no one ever talk about these movies? And that's what we are going to do. We're going to talk about these movies and try and figure out why nobody talks about these movies. But more importantly, find the beauty and the art that have been created in these pieces of film. I like beauty and art. He likes beauty art. And, and... I forgot the end in between, (laughs) but he likes end as well. So we pick movies that need more love, that need more light shone upon them. Bartek, what is the movie that we are going to be covering in this episode? Ladies and gentlemen, especially those who haven't read the title of the episode, today we are going to do the movie Wolf Creek Dvar. Ah. Look, I I, mm, I don't speak Polish. That's also another running gag you can find in the Wikipedia page. Yeah, it's it's under the running gag subtopic. Running gags. It's entitled the Paul Giamatti tag. Yes. Yeah. Don't don't look at the cancelled gags where you know, like we say something racist. We we say like uh, fire. We make we mention semen every episode. We talk about my great grandfather in the World War Two. <laughs> cancelled gags. No cu- yeah, current gags. You know what? I'm gonna bring those back down this episode. <laughs> Um, look, I don't speak Polish. I almost thought it was Wolf Creek something for a while there, but uh, you lost me. Well, you're wrong, stupid. It's Wolf Creek 2. Wolf Creek 2, the 2013 classic that came out like 10 years after the original for no apparent reason. Wolf Creek 2. Yeah, like 8 years, but yeah. 8, sorry. Woo! What a time to be alive. 8? Sounds like AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about AIDS, we usually have people who help us on this show who as suffer a- a- from... AIDS is in, like, A-I-D-E-S. No, I meant, like, we usually have people who are suffering from the disease AIDS who help us on this show. Oh, God. And who's our sufferer today, Bartek? Our sufferer today? Ladies and gentlemen, suffering with us today is a veteran to the show. Uh, the mosh pit man himself, Stefan Bradley. Hello, gentlemen. Do Great you, to be here. Do you feel the suffering yet? Oh, dude, absolutely. I am so insufferable, and I'm ready for the suffering. Like <laughs> He's a suffragette. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I fought for my rights. <laughs> we, we should really do the suffragettes movie on this show, because no one ever talked oh, about I've that. I've never even heard of that word. Suffragette is... Um, well, it's a type of airplane that um, usually is operated in water. Okay. Yep, that's what a suffragette is, isn't it, Stefan? Yeah, totally. I uh, fought I've... for those rights to to, to fly. <laughs> he, to, to, to fly my one. water to jet. Here's another cancelled running joke. I've driven that in GTA. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, GTA's never a cancelled joke. So, Stefan, we are doing Wolf Creek 2. And... We are going to get this started. We're going to get straight onto this. No, no backstories. No, we're going to get this happening right now because we're, we're not this slowing has been down. Waiting for too long, this movie. Yeah. So Ryan didn't even mention his last name in this episode. I don't even need to. 
I don't even need to because you want to know my what my last name is. You want to guess? You want to guess my last name? You want to guess it? It's it's Wolf Creek Two. Get started. That's its name. That's my name now. I've legally changed my name from from Ryan Swinski to Ryan. Get Wolf Creek Two started now, or whatever I said a moment ago. So get your copy ready because I know everyone who listens to this show always has a legal copy of the film that we are talking about. And get it ready. Get it in there. Get it started, because we're going to start it in 3, 2, 1, play. So this is Wolf Creek 2, boys. What is our history with this movie? Stefan, let's hear from you first. Uh, him first? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I... Well, if we go back to the first one as well, like, I just watched it in the privacy of my, old, of my, my own home, and I was like, Wolf Creek is one of those movies where... Uh, you watch it, it's like, oh my god, it's a great movie. Then you watch it and you start to regret your decisions because it's pretty shocking and uh, pretty. it's very violent. Of course, it's an Australian cult classic. Anyway, me and Reese, who I'm pretty sure you've had on the show. We've had a three guy times. named Reese on the show, yeah. Yes, and uh, we saw we saw the second one in 2014 because it was made in 2013 and then they released it in 2014. <laughs> so yeah, nine years after the last one. And it, it, it was quite good. Like, I liked it. I mean, it's definitely underappreci- uh, unappreciated. It's certainly a masterpiece, which is why it's... And it's based on actual events, isn't it? Yes, exactly. And this title card is in the first one, too. Except for the font's different. Yeah. (laughs) 30,000 people, when you see that, you think, oh, must be in Central Australia, but, you know, that's all of Australia, because that's what I was thinking the first time. Yeah, no, to be honest with you, Stefan, I didn't think there were 30,000 people in Central Australia, (laughs) if I'm honest with you, ever. (laughs) Some are never seen again. So you didn't think it was in Tasmania? No, obviously not. I actually thought it was on uh, in New Zealand, surprisingly, even though they said oh. Australia. So, Stefan, how old were you when you first saw Wolf Creek? Wolf Creek, the first one? Yeah. Or? Oh, the first one? Um... No, how old were you in 2014? Do tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the first one was, uh, I think it was like 2011, maybe 2010. Oh, so you saw it fairly late. Yeah. Fairly late out of the gate. Yeah. Look, every, everybody knew about Wolf Creek. Like, oh, everybody. If you are Australian and didn't know about Wolf Creek, the real question is, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so, Look, Bartek, I was busy, all right? Bartek, asking that question, what's wrong with you? Uh, could you answer that? What's wrong with you, Bartek? Are you okay? I feel a bit of sexual tension between you and Stefan. You know, I feel like I'm stuck in the middle of a, a raging homoerotic film. Well, um, could you ask the question again? Because uh... what's wrong with you, Bartek? Well, I mean, you know, I, I woke up late. I stayed up late. Got you forgot about daylight shit. savings. Well, yeah, yeah me so too. did you. And so we did all Stefan. forgot. <laughs> We're operating on twelve o'clock time. Mm-hmm. So. What's your history with this film, Bartek? Um, Stefan talks about it a lot, and that's it. That's that's all I knew about it. So when when, and you you asked me like last week, Ryan, who can we get on the next episode? I'm like, oh, I'll ask my friends. And Stefan and Reese were the first to respond, but Reese was on recently. I was like, I'll give it to Stefan. And not only that, he was the first one to respond. Go me. Um, and then we were trying to think of a movie, and we couldn't think of one. I'm like, I'll ask Stefan. I kind of knew what he'd say. Mm. He said Wolf Creek, but maybe Wolf Creek 2, because that's the less popular one. And then you and I deliberated, and we thought, yeah, let's do that. And that's the history of you of this film. Yep, and then I Thanks. saw it. That's my history of it. I will be... Uh, yeah, let's unpack it, shall we? Unpack the whole history. I was born in 1993 on the 5th of September. It was a nice morning when it happened, and, and I... No, we'll get... My history with this movie is... I watched it last night, for the first time, before doing this show. I had never seen either of them. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, Wolf Creek, so I, I should get on to it. I should get on to it. I watched both films back-to-back, and the best description... At the moment, before we actually talk about anything about this actual film itself, is the best way to describe Wolf Creek 2 is you can really notice the difference from Wolf Creek 1. Mm, Absolutely. Oh, just to be clear, I'm the only one who hasn't seen the first Wolf Creek. I've only seen two. Yeah, Bartek went straight into number two, which, um, yeah, yeah, you can. You easily can, because they're both self-contained stories. That's true, but I would personally recommend to those listening at home that I... the first one has the element of surprise. What? You weren't surprised? Well, Bartek, you weren't surprised? <laughs> Look. You weren't surprised when he grabbed out his knife? <laughs> Look, before before I saw this movie, I'd, I'd had that idea in my head that, um, you know, Wolf Creek 1 is the superior film. That Wolf Creek 1 is the really good film. When I finished this movie, I thought, I just watched a really good film. 
maybe I accidentally saw Wolf Creek 1. <laughs> but as and it turns out, no, I did see Wolf Creek 2. You know what really gave it away? What? When the title card said Wolf Creek, and Bartok's like, oh shit, it's Wolf Creek, and then <laughs> it slowly fades up the number 2, and you're like, <gasps> oh, oh <my> wow, <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, it was surprising. It's like, that's like a jump scare in itself. <laughs> a slow burn jump scare. Where you're like sitting there, and then it's just like, two, ah! But, but yeah, like, they are self-contained stories, but the the second one pretty much relies, like, everyone knows who Mick Taylor is from the first one, obviously. Yeah. So that's why he's in the very first scene, well, basically, where, in, in, as you've seen in the first one, he doesn't appear until, like, almost, like, halfway through. Oh, I thought the young cop would be the villain. Yeah, I thought the young cop was Mick Taylor, even though I watched it back to back. I'm like, is that Mick Taylor? <laughs> is this like a prequel See, story? I've got, I've got justification. You just, it's you're a, silly guy. I'm like, he wears the same shirt too, I think. <laughs> yes. I'm like, huh, is this a prequel story about how Mick Taylor became Mick Taylor? He pulled over a guy who looks like him in the future, and he's like, I'm going to become this guy. Oh, yeah, this is a prequel, yeah. I can't wait for the... So, in the special features, I mean, in the uh, trivia, it says that they originally came up with, like, a backstory to why Mick Taylor... Like, a proper backstory of why Mick Taylor's Mick Taylor, and then they just didn't do it, and they've left it for the TV series, apparently? Um, they've also released... Well, yes, but they've also released two, like, prequel novels. Novels? Yeah, which you can pick up. Are they called... What are they called? Taylor's Outback? (laughs) I think one's just called Wolf Creek Origins, the other one's called, I think, Wolf Creek... Uh, desolation. Oh, thing. what? They should have called it Wolf Creek Requiem for a Reckoning. I mean, come on. So what's his what's his backstory? Um, uh, I'm not entirely sure like what's what's in the novels, but briefly, what I read in the synopsis of it says that he might even have some weird supernatural like powers. Of That's course, what's in the synopsis, oh. but I haven't read it. But <laughs> okay, Bartek, <laughs> could you pitch me uh, his supernatural backstory, please? Something about the outback. All right, Mister Warner. <laughs> uh, no, we're Australia, so you got to say Mr. Warner. Oh, no, Mr. No, Warner. Mr. Warner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr. Shane Warner. <laughs> yeah. He's mentioned in the movie. He's got a shout out. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I'm Shane Warner. <laughs> yeah, pitch the movie to me. Yeah. Alright, Mr. Warner. Um, uh, yeah. I want to make a uh, Wolf Creek. Uh, am I making Wolf Creek 3 or Wolf Creek 2 not exist yet, mate? Wolf Creek Origins. Ah, right, Wolf Creek Origins. Um, <laughs> not Wolverine Origins, Wolf <laughs> Creek Origins. Nah, Wolf, Wolverine Origins made by a Polish guy, can't do that. Um, so, <laughs> fucking, there's this book called Wolf Creek Origins, but let's fucking disregard it. Um, <laughs> Alright then. Now, we need to come up with an origin story for this guy, Mick Taylor. Um, <laughs> fucking Mick Taylor, he's my, you know, he hates me, but go on. <laughs> I really want to see a movie about a guy who hates me. Go yeah, on. I've seen, I've seen two, I made two. Um, <laughs> so, he's, we, we gotta give him some powers, right? Because... Obviously. He, he goes through a lot of fucking shit in Wolf Creek 1, I think. I don't know, I didn't make that one. Well, he's and a sharpshooter. Wolf, and start. Wolf Creek 2. Um, so we need to give him some powers that make him, like, fucking really cool. Um, I was reading uh, the fucking Batman, you know, comics. Uh, there was this guy <laughs> called uh, Dead Sharpshooter or something like that. Yeah. Um, fucking, I think that we'll set Wolf Creek Origins uh, before that character was introduced in like the fucking forties or whatever. Um, ah, so right, we're turning turn of the century. Mick Taylor's one hundred and four years old. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll set that there so that when fucking DC like, oh, you ripped off Dead Sharpshooter, Will Smith or whatever. Um. <laughs> You know, we can say, no, this is our scene's set earlier, so we, we you ripped us off. Um, that's one thing. Uh, we've also got a, that fucking Friday 13th guy, Freddy Voorhees or whatever. Yeah, Freddy got fingered, yeah. Yeah, Freddy got fingered. <laughs> that's right, yeah, Tom Green. Um, <laughs> yeah, Tom Green's Mick Taylor's he's, dad. He's got... <laughs> that's a fucking good idea, Shane. Um, I'm a fucking legend. Mick Taylor is Tom Green's, <laughs> Tom Green's son, and he's got his powers to fucking... Even when he dies, he comes back. Um, fucking, what else do you need, actually? I was thinking that you should have pitched it like, <laughs> all right, it's set just before uh, Wolf Creek One. So let's say it's set in 1990, right? Mm. It's nine years before Wolf Creek One. Mick Taylor's doing his Mick Taylor thing, but guess what? He chases this couple onto Aboriginal burial grounds, oh, that's and good. then he's cursed for all eternity by the Aboriginal people 
to be soulless, and he has to kill a certain amount of tourists to gain his soul back. Also, I believe Mick Teller is also the, the name of the first Rolling Stones lead guitarist. So, you know, maybe he's a bit pissed uh, off that he le- that he was... I don't know, did he leave, or was he kicked out, or he passed away? Or did I'm he die? Really sure, I can't, I can't remember. Well, I but know if he did die, this is where he's, he actually is, so it's f- conspiracy. Now, how, you see, this film is showing what Australian masculinity is. This guy, this cop, is nearly dead. He gets his leg broken. He cries a little bit, but then Mick Taylor says, "Shut up, you baby," and he does. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's true blue Aussie. For you people who are not from Australia, when an, when an Australian gets a limb removed, they will cry, obviously, because do we not bleed? But then, if if a if a mate in an Akubra hat tells you to shut up, you fucking cunt, you do it. You know why? Because that's the Australian way. <laughs> if you know what to shut the fuck up. If you've ever seen that Ronnie John's Chopper harden the fuck up Australia thing, you'd know that the last joke in that video is that a character cut their own arm off on a dare, and that was fucking spot on. Yeah. Um, you know what I love? In the first... Nah, we won't make too many comparisons to the first one, but in the first movie, Bartek, yep. you haven't seen, he uses the same rifle to sharp shoot shoot this elderly old man through his, like, uh, through his eye, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's, like, and he's not even as far away. And in this movie, he shoots the young policeman through a car and his head explodes. <laughs> yeah. In the first one, he's, like, the guy's just, like, shot through the eye. He has no eye. The back of his head's, like, blown off. But, like, in this movie, his whole head. And then later on, he shoots the, 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 uh, the one, woman. The the woman, and only, like, half of her face is blown off from the back, not, like, all of her head. Just, it like, was... a hole, not not. Oh, yeah, just a hole for her cheek. Yeah. yeah. She, which would be great for giving gobbies. <laughs> uh, gobbies <laughs> is an Australian term for love. So this, <laughs> this part right here, we've done that already, right? Um, well, given gobbies? Yeah. I know uh, that you and Stefan have a thing going on here, but Jesus. So he was like, I can make the ticket go away, and then he burns him. He could have just thrown the ticket in there. It's like there. No, he put it in his pocket. Yeah, he wants to keep the ticket. No, yeah, but... Oh, that thing he put in the cops? Yeah, that was the ticket. Oh. Then it wouldn't, wouldn't it have been better if like he threw it in after the cops said I can make it go away and then he No, it it's just it? fun when he oh, just right. goes it's Wolf Creek. Oh wait, it is Wolf Creek. <gasps> oh! Oh, oh, oh yeah. I thought we were watching Wolf Creek this mini series. <laughs> By the way, Bartek, as a first time viewer of this uh franchise, when you saw the first shot the first shot where that head explodes, were you just like <laughs> Yeah, were you scared? I was just like, <laughs> Oh, it's this type of movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's wait, wait, gory. you knew that Wolf Creek was a horror, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. But then I saw this, I'm like, oh, montage. Did, did you think that this character was ever going to come back? I, <laughs> that that one, I didn't, this woman? I didn't really know how to take this montage. Well, it's kind of like, you know, again, calling back to the first film, they have mm. a party montage. Ah, it was a callback. It's a call forward, you know, a uh, forward to arms. Oh, because this is Taylor. a prequel, right. Nope. No, <laughs> yeah. this is not a prequel. Well, uh, yeah, maybe it it's, no, it's got mobile not. phones. Yeah. <laughs> In the first movie, they carry around a disc man with them. Oh, yeah, the first one's 1999. This is set in the present time, I guess, because I have And Nick phones. Taylor's aged. Yeah. <laughs> you are seriously a hero. Aww. Hero is from Germany. Yeah. So, Bartek, uh, you and I had seen this movie blind. Like, I had seen the first one, but okay. At what point did you think... Okay, are these our main? Are like, are these not our main character? Like, I was really confused. I'm like, oh, so we, it's a foreign movie now because it's like a good twenty five minutes of this is subtitled because these main characters are foreign. They're German. Yeah, like, see, at this point we're watching this muted, but the, like the music's still playing the that song. I forgot what the song is already. Wild child. Born to yeah, be born to be wild. wild. Born to be wild. So. I was kind of like, when are they going to give us, you know, more information about this couple? Like, I, not. We didn't even actually know that they were German. Yet. I mean, we could kind of tell because with their blonde hair, blue be- eyes, and stiff arms. Yeah. And when the first guy, when the guy first appeared, his the opening credits had this name like something Klaus. I'm like, oh, that's fucking crazy. Klaus. <laughs> Here's where. See, look, he's got... They've got harmonicas. That must mean they're German. That must mean they're hillbillies. Hillbilly Germans. So, Bartek, what was your thoughts? Did you think, oh, these guys are going to be our main characters? What did you think was going to happen for these guys? Um, I was like, okay, so these guys are our main characters, and uh, uh, um, and Mick Taylor's going yeah. to capture them. It's going to be like a, a death game, kind of like yeah. a bigger version of what the first one offered. Yeah, pretty much. If you've seen the first one, you pretty maybe, much Maybe a, a cat prediction. and mouse kind of thing going yeah. on. And then it was like, no, these are not our main characters. 
Yeah, they're our decoy protagonists. So. Oh, yeah. You even get their backstories. You get attached to them. But to be fair, this movie, they kind of just pass the... Like, we can say that the protagonist has a baton, like, baton, sorry. And they pass it over. Like Yeah, it, they pass it over it's to an English kind man. Of, it's kind of the guy, I'd say. Then when he dies, the girl takes it, and then... Mike was his name, the English guy? Yeah. Paul. The English Paul. Guy. Paul. Yeah, then they pass it over to Paul, and Paul's our real protagonist. And then Paul passes it on to that elderly couple who live <laughs> in the desert. <laughs> on magnetic... They're our heroes. On magnetic ground. <laughs> you know what's funny about that elderly couple? <laughs> they were great. Yeah, but, um... Obviously, I didn't read the IMDb reviews, but I went to the message board, and one of them was like, did anyone think about the elderly couple dot dot dot... I clicked it, and the message was like, did you think that they were mixed parents and that they were in on it? And, like, wasn't that what the movie was kind of, you know, inferring? What? What do you mean, mixed? Mixed Mi- parents? Mick. Oh, his Mick. His parents. Oh, his parents. Right. They're not his parents. I know that, but, like, the IMDb thing was, like, <laughs> suggesting, I'm like... Oh, that- yeah, because of that scene where, like, they're, they're taking... When, when the thing is like, oh my god, is, is he in like mixed house now? Like at the start, yeah. is he in mixed house? Yeah, like the thing Mix, was asking, really did anyone Christian else? House. Yeah, <laughs> did anyone else think that? I'm like, wasn't that like kind of implied? Yeah, in a way, like because you didn't because know. it was uh, it was kind of unsettling at first. Yeah, but he's not. They're not his parents. <laughs> no, obviously not. But like when you first saw it, you thought that they were in on something. Right? You thought they were like. Mick. Well, I didn't. I just thought that this guy was being too paranoid. I thought before you met them that it was like, oh, is this Mick's house? But I'm like, it's also very different to the Mick that we met in the first movie because Mick did not come across as a Christian loving man. <laughs> but isn't that like the whole horror thing? Like things are unexpected. Like That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like freaking. I don't want to spoil it, but Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, who knew you, that? Need I, need I say more? <laughs> need, no, don't. Uh, it's just, you know, Mick in the first one, he's not a guy that would... He, I know he's defying expectations, but Mick's not a guy in the first one, at least, and he's not in this movie, at least, a guy would have Jesus on his wall. He's a guy who would have a half-eaten man on his wall. But Pretty could, much, you, yeah. could you see his parents possibly having Jesus on their wall? Well, this is a good question. Stefan, you're the Wolf Creek expert. Mm. What happened to Mick Taylor's parents? Can Did he jail? kill them? <laughs> Um, yeah, Kangaroo well, Jack happened. I actually, I actually don't want to spoil the TV series because that's all revealed in the TV. Series. Oh, it is. Yes. Oh, shit. So, there is, there is. Um, are they played by anyone interesting? Um, are they actually in it, or is it just explained? Nah, yeah, they're in. They're in flashbacks. So, oh my god, the book, that'd be cool. They take parts of the prequel novels, I believe, and they put it in like the final episode of the TV series, so you get a bit of backstory. I don't want to say too much, but um, they're nice people. Um, uh, <laughs> no, nah, they were people of their time. So nice Just people. Yeah. Think about, yeah, think about how, like... think about how old Mick is and think about how old, you know, what era his parents. So nice been. people, but yeah. <laughs> nice. Back in then, they would be normal Nice people. racist people. No, yeah. they're just fun loving <laughs> people. This guy. So who was our favorite character other than Mick? <laughs> yeah. Um, first of all, this guy, I mean, you know, he's just hairy. He's got a freaking nipples what's wrong what's up with that ryan i don't know the first one the main character had a nipple ring so i guess this guy's like already lower down the chain than we the first need, guy mm-hmm. we need more exposure of inverted nipples in films do you have inverted nipples yes then get in a movie mate <laughs> oh by the way my answer is this lady <laughs> we had the yeah the goat lady yes. and she makes a kid joke be careful kids and i'm like ha 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 because she has baby goats the ones named oh that they called kid yeah, I didn't know that. Nutella, Casper, and Marley. Good names for goats. Yeah, I liked her because... You thought she was going to come back, didn't you? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't think she was going to come back at all, but... And she was just this one-scene wonder that, that was really interesting. She had goats. Stefan, what about you? Other than Mick, who was your favourite in Wolf Creek 2? Well, of course, um... Uh, good old uh, British Paul was pr- was pretty was pretty cool. But, you know, you can't get pa- get past the old couple, especially the uh, elderly man who is really kind to the uh, to Paul, but then when he sees Mick Taylor, he's like, get off my property, mate. He knows where his loyalties lie. Exactly. It's, it's, it's and, very Metal Gear Solid. And, it's, and my favourite character is uh, not so much like a character in terms of you don't see their face. It's uh, the... Yeah. <laughs> you want to guess? 
Is it the white car? <laughs> the white car that throughout this movie keeps leaving people. In it the it dirt. pisses people off. Every time it appears, someone gets really pissed off. I wanted it. I want Wolf Creek three to be about that car. Like the movie opens up with them driving past Paul and being like. And it's like this, and it was, and it's like this city couple as well with a family, and they're just like, I wonder what that guy's doing on the road. Yeah, like fuck I, him. I really <laughs> thought that that car was gonna play into things, like it's it's Mick <laughs> Spy or something. I was even thinking, wouldn't it be great in the third one if Mick Taylor's being hunted down by this white car, <laughs> and it becomes like, um, what's that Steven Spielberg movie where the guy's being chased down by a truck? It's like Steven Spielberg, one of his first ever movies. Is just like. He's getting, like, it's about this guy who's really afraid because this truck keeps following him everywhere he goes. I'm not sure. And I'm thinking Mick Taylor should have that in the third one of this what? white car. And it just gets him angrier and angrier and angrier. <laughs> and to the point where he's like, fuck it, I'm burning a nuclear bomb in my back shed. Oh, it's Stephon, kill everyone. Is Stefan going to say that the car is explained in the TV series? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's not the white car, but like um, Mick's blue truck becomes like a, a character itself. Well, it is so, a character in both Yeah, movies. yeah, because the, the basic... I went without saying too much. The basic story is uh, Mick kills this uh, American girl's family, and then she wants revenge. So she keeps trying to find. Fu- that it's like a kind of mouse game between them. They want to find each other because mm. she escapes because she doesn't get killed. And it's like yeah, the blue truck. Have you have you seen this blue truck? And so forth and so forth. Mm. So yeah, the blue truck does become. Oh, a here it is, Ryan. Oh, here <laughs> it is. You know what? I think they're different white cars as well because this was like a big one with like signage. We'll have to check it out. But it's like white cars are the villains in this movie again giving across what this movie's really trying to intend to say, which is white people are crazy. <laughs> Do you think that the driver of that white car is that family we saw at the crater? I also thought that. I thought that, yeah. but it was also like you you can't you can't know. Yeah. It could be it could be anyone. It's like freaking maybe it's a reference to Mr. Bean. Of course. By the way, apparently Rooka, his name, is a reference to a movie that he that um with Greg McLean. Yeah, you know this, you know the with movie? Hitcher. Yeah, yeah. He he took inspiration from Don't worry, movie. it's mentioned a lot in the reviews that movie. <laughs> Hitcher. Okay. Everyone was like, Hitcher this movie is Hitcher meets Mad Max Two with Texas Chainsaw Massacre thrown in just for fun. Jeez. And they even stole his was, name, it's Rooker. I was making jokes before this episode that like it's gonna be another case of Zathura where you keep talking about Jumanji. And I thought for sure that this time it would be Wolf Creek One that we keep talking about. But no, we're but talking... No, it's this what's the movie? Uh, the Hitcher. Hitcher. Okay. It's about Rutger Hauer, and he's a, he's a, he's crazy, man. So by this point of the movie, do you think? Oh yeah, these guys are the main characters. Well, they. I knew that they were going to die because they have implied sex, and that's always yeah. Dead. That's, that's almost like a cliche. In itself, that's always it? dead. Yeah. You know like what? Okay, now Bartek sex. again. We'll try not. We keep saying this, but we are just going to talk about Wolf Creek one. Two. I don't, uh, go but ahead. the movies, Stefan, you're a big expert. Mm. I think the movies, if you had like a little subtitle for them, is like you know how it has like thirty thousand oh, people Creek missing. One, the beginning. Yeah, no, it's like you know how they have like little things like you know Wolf Creek One, thirty thousand people go missing each year. You know, some of them are found. I think both movies can be. Oh, Wolf- tagline. Right. Yeah, tagline. Sorry, Wolf Creek. Mick Taylor tries to get some and is always interrupted. Because mm. in each, in both films, Mick Taylor is on the verge of raping someone and then something interrupts him. Like in the first one, the girl explodes all of, like, explodes the car and he's like, oh. And then in this one, he's trying to rape this girl and then the guy that he stabbed clearly in the spine and severed it can walk. Yeah. <laughs> and it hits him in the head. So in this movie, also, every person that Mick Taylor goes up against in one way or another like it's all messed up they wrong him kind of well, like the cops they give yeah, him that they give him a the ticket. cops are definitely being dicks yeah true, uh, that true. wrongs him um more so with Rutger is that his name Rutger yeah or Rutger R- Rutger um, he can like, see like he keeps smoke. repeating like no like he repeats a lot of things and that annoys Mick and that like he, what off. he does is not fall into Mick's death trap and that's worth being killed yeah. for yeah and the girl I mean by association I guess and then the guy by association I guess by, well the guy was trying to save her so that's so like that took away his plaything so everything not my fucking plaything <laughs> so if nobody wronged him he would still kill people, yeah. Um, but he'd be nicer about it, Ryan, you think? You never saw the first one. 
<laughs> he does it for fun. Yeah. But guys, maybe maybe this movie wants to be a standalone you film. See, here's maybe the, it's not a sequel. Here's the thing I liked about Wolf Creek 1 and 2. Uh, 2 explains his reasoning a bit more. But for me, I feel like Mick Taylor is, you know, what I like about him in both movies, more so in the first one, but is just he's an unstoppable force of nature. Like, he is just... A thing that just kills, 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 and then can just disappear. Like I said, in the Australian Shane, Outback. He's got his father, Tom Green's qualities. Yeah, he's got Freddy Got Fingered qualities. Yes. And that's what I like about the character of Mick Taylor is he can just fade into the Outback and he's just an animal, just like everything else out there. He's just a thing that's going to... Another thing in the Australian Outback that's going to kill you. And that's yeah. the thing. Like, he just... He appears out of nowhere. He's really, when you think about it, just a regular human being. Like, he's not like, you know, the other classic horror movie. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't invade people's dreams. Yeah, you're right. Gord was unstoppable when Freddy got fingered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so he... this you, you feel like, yeah, this is someone you could actually meet now in the Outback. In the outback. Some oh, psycho. Oh, he called them buggers. Uh-oh. That's what ass- the hell are you bloody That's assuming doing? that they <laughs> commit buggery. They Mick, do. Stop making assumptions about them. They just had normal sex. So, I watched. Watched what? Them have normal sex. That's why I can say they just had normal sex. Not Bartek was there. I was there. Uh, German sex, they thought, they thought that I was German because I said, hello, hello. I think they could tell in your Polish, Polish accent. In Polish, hello is still a thing you could say. I think they could tell. No, no, they they couldn't. I was like, Stefan, I think they could ich tell. Ich bin ein, <laughs> ich bin ein Deutsch. Well, that's great, man. You know, Thank you. I'm very glad that you could speak that too. Brilliant. I, I can and, say and, and I, Another thing I can't do. Thanks for pointing that out. So, did you, during this film, Bartek, uh, feel scared? You know, considering that, you know, you're foreign enough for Mick Taylor to kill. <laughs> so, hold on, that's a thing. Um, <laughs> does he kill t- tourists only? If he it's can. His specialty. If he can. I'm but not other a tourist. Pe- but other people... No, but you're foreign enough. Like, he kills people who are foreign enough anyway. Like, he kills Australians. So, not tourists? His- Mainly tourists, because who else is going out there other than tourists? Oh, he does He does kill locals as well. As he does the kill... Police. He does kill many locals, but that's only because they get in the way. That's true, yeah. So, he in killed the first you guys move- too. Yeah, dicks. but... Only if we got in his way. Fuckers. We'll be less of a target, though, because even the the people at his lair at the end... Yeah, because he because he's, well. You see, you're like, oh, only tourists, but he only sees you as a tourist, because you're like... He's like, he's like, what's your name? Bartek. Fucking what? what am fucking I- Bartek. <laughs> so fucking what Bartek, fucking, mate. Fucking, I'll fucking show you where I can stick that bar up. Your tech and just stabs you with his, you with his robot uh, knife. <laughs> that was a good one, Mick. <laughs> I like when you compliment Mick in this movie. He actually gets distracted. Like in the first movie, they try to befriend Mick, and he's very like he's very standoffish, blah blah blah. And in this movie, he's just like, "I'll sing, I'll sing an Australian song," and Mick is just like, "Oh, that's got me. I, 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 I want to be friends with <laughs> this guy." He's got that laid back attitude, even though he's know, a larrikin. A larrikin. But that being said, he's. He kills kind of with laid back intentions. Like, yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, like he cuts this guy's dick off. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, in, in, <laughs> At in least the... he compliments it. He does <laughs> yeah, he compliment does. it. In, in the uh, TV series, we'll talk about the tourist thing before. There's like, if you watch the trailer for the TV series, just like, he's like, what do you do for fun, sir? And he's like, oh, you know, I'm a pest shooter. I shoot pigs, other things, tourists. <laughs> and he does his laugh. <laughs> and they laugh with him, you know, until he kills him. Like of the same way? Yeah, that, that laugh, which I can't replicate, but apparently that laugh, he worked on it for a very long time. Do the tourists laugh like he laughs? Like, uh, yeah, they're going to kill you. Well, to that, joke, like, to that joke, yeah, he, they chuckled. What if... What if... What, what if What if he came up against Vincent Price? Wouldn't you? <laughs> well, you can't kill a killer. <laughs> I mean, and Vincent Price did his laugh. Which is? Like, the one at the end of Thriller and stuff like that. Do it. You want me to do Vincent Price laugh? Yeah, yeah come on, line up this scene. <laughs> 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 Is that it? That's it? I think so. That's, I haven't heard Thriller that... in a while. Oh, okay. I mean, close, but that was more <laughs> like the puppet from Goosebumps. I, haven't, I don't even know that. I know Vincent Price more than I know that. So I thought you were going to say something completely different. I thought you were going to be like, wouldn't it be interesting if John Jarrett chose a different laugh? So it would be like, 
I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> right, you're giggling at a rape scene. Almost it's rape. It's implied rape. I was there. I know that it was almost rape. Do you, do you find that laugh scary though? <laughs> I find Which it. I, can't I find replicate. it creepy. Yeah, yeah, creepy. It's definitely creepy. But it's also natural. Like you hear that laugh in the real Australian lifestyle. Like I don't know about other countries, but like that laugh is. Some Australians do that laugh. It is. It is a laugh that exists. It's not like a weird laugh that doesn't exist. You know, like mm. certain laughs. Like Vincent Price's laugh doesn't exist in the real world, <laughs> or at least in our in our world. Well, it exists in, like, films and stuff, for sure. Yeah, but yeah. did you hear I said real world? <laughs> <laughs> but films are in the real world, Ryan. They're this really... is a true story. Yeah, it's based, on, based actual on actual events. events. Based on yeah, so, 14 actual events. So this scene here, I was thinking to so myself... So he pulled off her underwear? Go on, Bertha, you say? Well, yeah, the first time I watched the movie, it was like, what did he pull off? And then this time, I'm like, oh, oh, it's just underwear. Yeah, yeah I think at says, first um, you think, oh, what? It's like it's, like, it's, like it's her heart or something. <laughs> Free yeah, I thought like did she did he like pull out part of the vagina or something? The vagina, the, vagina. <laughs> yeah, the vagina. Well, but it's like the vag is not that brightly coloured floral arrangement, but uh, Ryan, you could uh, like to think. Do you, don't you think that you know Mick Taylor would brighten things up? I guess yeah, by just trying to brighten her up. Look, look how um look how like she looks. Yeah, geez. <laughs> yeah look at her. She looks like. Scully from X Files. It's kind of weird. So at this point, did you realize that Rutger is going to be the main character? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I thought that it would be one of those movies where they stick his head on like a spider body and he just chases Mick Taylor through the desert. Could have also been like Yay. like a that lollipop chainsaw game where the main ca- girl is like carrying around her boyfriend's head the whole time and the head can talk. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. Shit, and you know what would you do with that head? Like, what does Mick Taylor do with these bodies? He just hangs them about the place, but like he cuts this guy up to like a million pieces. Stefan, you're an expert. Tell us, tell us what Mick Taylor's gonna do with Rutger's body. Does he kiss it um, like a faggot? Well, you do, you do see it like in the next bit where he's just you know slice. No, he's just gonna feed it to like the dogs. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the oh, dogs yeah, this need be good to feed. For the dogs. Ah, big one. Ah. <laughs> I, I got a heart. Acknowledge my joke before they think I'm a homophobe. No, <laughs> no. Bartek, did you? Hey, Stefan, did you know Bartek's homophobe? No, homophobe. I don't. Bartek hates the homosexuals and the homeless, just for good measure. <laughs> he also hey, hates homeless on, homosexuals, I or as I like to movie. call them, homeless. Hey, come on, homeless. man! I saw a movie about homeless people the other day. What was it? Tokyo Godfathers. Oh, I thought you were going what? to say. Wolf Creek 2 because does Mick Taylor really have a home yeah, are these these, these tourists are homeless they only have tents yeah they only they have a home in their hearts which is kind of ironic because Mick Taylor rips this guy's heart out Ooh. of his chest their home so, so. is the world home is where the gutter is so Bartek do you think that you could beat Mick Taylor in a history quiz of Australia <laughs> I mean when he asked a cricket question I was like Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Ricky that, that's something? exactly what the main character said. But, but my, my thing was that I was confident in my answer because I'm like, oh, there's that game named after the guy. And like for some reason, I wasn't thinking Don Bradman. I was thinking like Ricky Ponting. Like, I think both of us know absolutely nothing about cricket. I don't know about you, Ryan. Well, I knew it was Don Bradman when he was like, yeah, yeah. the answer is Don. Was Don when he said the D thing, I'm like, fuck, then what is it? And then when the guy's like, Don Bradman, bitch, I'm like, oh, shit, <laughs> of course. Rick, Ricky Ponting's not Australian, is, is he? I, think I, he don't, be... I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, I, I have no idea. I know nothing about cricket, so for those who well, love cricket, I'll pretend sorry. Well, I'll pretend that I know something about cricket. Um, It's an insect that rubs its legs together to make to an say... interesting noise. Okay, right. Was that a grasshopper? Right, make the interesting noise. <laughs> Do it, make the interesting noise. Oh, no. <laughs> that was the noise. It just oh, says, no. Nah. That was so easy. I should have done that when you asked me about the Vincent Price line. <laughs> yeah. Ask me again. Uh, do the noise. <laughs> crickets, crickets don't sound like Vincent Price laughing. Well, you haven't obviously heard any crickets here. No, they make a noise that I just made, which is, ah, uh, no. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no? When you're so, in the Australian Outback, you hear a cricket, so, right, you just then, hear a bunch of, 
Ah, nah. So when a stand-up comedian does a lame joke, they just hear a bunch of, ah, nah, ah, nah, ah, nah, ah, nah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like how in your world, when a, when a comedian in the real world makes a bad joke, there are literal crickets in the room. Yeah. Like in Bartek's universe, it's like, hey guys, what's the deal with airline foods? And the <laughs> audience all agrees, well, that wasn't very good. Get out of the crickets. <laughs> the most, look, the most confident <laughs> <laughs> the most confident stand-up comedians in the world are ladies named Anna, because the cricket sounds like they're saying their name. Yeah. Anna, 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 Anna. Anna Ferris. Woo. So now back onto the movie instead of all this blue cricket truck. talk. There you go. The we missed truck. the penis part. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's being fed to the dog. Ryan, make an image about the penis. Um, I'll call it. I'll call it. Uh, well, Mick said Mick complimented it, so he said that he was. Mick was, so a she fan, was a fan. She was a lucky Mick's girl. Mick's a fan of the penis, and that would be the. <laughs> 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 Here's the thing: Is Mick gay? Well, because at the end of the movie, he really doesn't appreciate the fact of being called a faggot. <laughs> Which was what I was trying to reference. Yeah, earlier. Ma- yeah, there are some little undertones there, so maybe there's he's... some homoerotic undertones. Yeah. Potentially. Yes. Maybe he's in denial. Maybe that's why he's... Uh, Maybe he got persecuted for being a gay man in the Australian Outback by evil German tourists mm-hmm. and he's forever taking it out. He really hates the English, though. Maybe. Like, I don't remember how that scene went. Like, when the guy called him a faggot, did he, like, hug him and go, shh, shh don't say that, baby? Is no, that how it went? no. no he, he, he hugged him. He was definitely him. rougher than that. He was, he was, like, he turned him around, oiled up his dick and said, I'll fucking show you, faggot! <laughs> was that... Before he kissed him or after? Well, he kissed him, like, during. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, see, he's, he, he Bartek's a bit slow. I really <laughs> like this guy. I really wouldn't know what was up with his girlfriend throughout the whole movie, because yeah. I was, like, yeah, 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 set that's, up. That's, um... That's never mentioned did again, you, really. you read the trivia on IMDb? Yeah, but do tell. Wasn't there a point there that said that, um... In the phone call, if you listen really carefully, like, the phone's scrambling up at the end, you can hear, like, Mick's laugh or something? <laughs> well, that's good to know. Like, I mean, we're watching it muted, so we can't tell, but, like, that's what the trivia said. But, like, he's, at this point, at this point, he's chasing the girl. Well, at this point, he's just driving. So, unless, like, on the other end, he's listening to, like, a recording or something of Mick. Or his girlfriend is Mick Taylor in a dress. (laughs) He has no backstory, really. That's that's the closest thing to a backstory. Excuse me, his backstory is he went to boarding school in England. And his mother gave him... They played records. That's right. Yeah. Oh, boarding school. So he'd know all about yeah. gay people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> actually, that is a joke kind of made. <laughs> um, help me. Yeah, I mentioned earlier. I saw that movie about homelessness, the Tokyo Godfathers. In that movie, one of the main characters' like plot points was that their cat, whose name was Angel, ran away. And in this <gasps> movie, we don't see a character who's being referred to as Angel. Maybe this movie is a sequel to Tokyo Godfathers, a 2003 Japan animation movie. Or or a prequel, who knows? It could be a prequel to anything. Okay, what's a movie that you think you could logically tie this as a prequel to that isn't Wolf Creek related? Um, Crocodile Dundee, he's Crocodile Dundee in the flesh. Loves the flesh, eats the flesh. Clearly. The wedding date. Moulin Rouge, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a period piece. Yeah, yeah. This is not the pre- movie though. The actual like stage show itself. Yeah, the yeah. actual <laughs> stage. Because Mick is a hundred and forty million years old. It's a sequel. Oh, he was there at the first time. It's a prequel to Moulin Rouge, where he is Baz Luhrmann's mentor, and he's just like. You know, I fucking hate tourists, but I have a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, and Baz Luhrmann's like, I like friends now too. I'm going to make a movie about it. What should I make it about, Uncle Mick? You should make it about the Mulan fucking Rouge. And you know, you should cast in it. Who? She's not around yet, but there's this great, there's this great sheila named Nicole Kidman. And he's like, well, you got me there. And then he just starts singing the numbers from from that. He's like, oh, how good it would it be if Mick Taylor, the character, was in Moulin Rouge and he did that Roxanne cover? And he's just like, Roxanne, <laughs> you fucking cunt. <laughs> Roxanne, you mong. And just keeps going on. I would love that. My favourite song from that movie is the Pitch song. Yeah. Yeah. My favourite moment from that movie was the end credits, because I really hate Moulin Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> I only saw it once for a uni class, but I liked it. 
Oh, well, that's unfortunate. It's really random. Makes, like, every random breath you this take, is, I'll be watching is, you. This is the moment where I get annoyed with horror movies. If it was me, I would have just rammed him and then fucked up his arm. He's got his arm leaning out of the car. I would just ram my car into his car and then his elbow and fucking arm will be damaged. You think like a Jeep will go faster than that truck, but uh, oh, this is not an wow. ordinary Do movie. You... This is the greatest movie ever well, made, don't of you, Don't you also think that the Jeep would go faster than the next vehicle Mick drives? The oh, truck. The, the big truck. The actual truck truck. But no, in That's all fairness, in defense of the Jeep... It was uh, damaged. It was damaged, running out of fuel, That's and true. also the truck was already in movement before he even got in the Jeep. Mm. He was lucky to get away from the truck, so... And he does out and he does outrun it at a certain yeah. point. And then his tyre mysteriously pops. Was it a gunshot? Was it just fate? Or was it plot device? You, you know how in horror movies there's that typical uh, trope of audiences go, like yelling at what they should do on the screen? Like you're saying, oh, he should have just turned the car into the Jeep, broke his arm and stuff like that? Mm. Mick actually brings up one of the ones that I was thinking of later when he was talking about the first rule of the Outback. Oh, yeah. Never <laughs> stop moving. Like, yeah, there are a lot of stop, points where... Never stop, yeah. Yeah, never stop. Like, Paul, he, he stops a lot. Like, he stops to put the body into a sleeping bag, and then he just sticks around for a bit, then he stops on the road to wait, and it's like, I don't know, if you kept driving, wouldn't you probably get to safety easier? Yeah, well, it's also that thing of, for good portions of this movie, Paul doesn't have a car... Well, at that point, he still had the Jeep. No, at that point, he still had the Jeep, but it's also like he's driving with blood splattered all over his window and a dead body. Well, he he breaks the See, window. See, this is... No, but that's after he stops. Also, like, I, so I don't know... I don't, doesn't explode. I don't think I would have ditched the body. Yeah. Oh, I would have. I see, <laughs> no, 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 no. See, this is where we all disagree. When that happened... Before that happened, I was actually, like, thinking, shit, this guy's going to get, like, obviously framed. Like, if he goes to the police, it's going to look very sus because the first movie and this movie is already set up that Mick Taylor can't get caught by the cops. Like, mm. you know, like, you go to a cop and say, oh, this girl that I found tied up and blah, 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 we were being chased by this guy and she got shot in the head in my car. They're like, who are you? Also, because they're local cops, they're like, we don't know this guy. Who the fuck are you? And they'll most likely arrest him. So that's why I actually found it really... I really appreciated this character of Paul. That he actually did that thing that if it was me in the movie... When I, you know how you're saying yelling at the screen? I would have yelled at the screen to be like, dump the fucking body in the desert. <laughs> but then he's actually committing a crime, isn't he? Yeah. Kinda. Well, yeah, obviously by accessory. But at this point in the game, all, all, all rules are off. I mean, he's tried to... He's been getting... Someone's trying to kill him. He's also trying to kill them in return. This woman got killed. He doesn't owe this woman nothing. And nobody's going to know. That's that's what I mean. Like, And also, this is the thing. I appreciate that, but this is what makes this film so great. It's a divisive movie in which it makes our main character, Mick Taylor, but the main hero, one who... who you know, he's got a lot of depth. Like, I really appreciated the acting in this movie a lot mm. more than the first movie. Like, the first movie, I felt like he had more time to know the heroes, but I didn't feel the acting emoted as much. Well, this guy, look at him. I, I really believe that this guy is is, you know, traumatized, mm. but he's going to keep going. Like, he's going to keep going to survive. He's going to keep moving forward, but boy, is it hard. So, and, would you say... Hold on, first of all, do you think he's a better character than Meek, or not? No, nah, well, he's a human for a start. Yeah. <laughs> well, but regardless, do you think he's a better character, or you know, just not quite as? Not quite as, but I yeah. feel like he's got a more emotional depth. Yeah, but would you say, then, that he's the second best character in the whole Mick Taylor mythos? Uh, no, that white car's the best. <laughs> I thought, sorry, the third best, then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. But, like, I really enjoyed this actor's performance in what could have been, like, you know, a, a typical slasher, whatever. Like, this guy could have really done a bad job, but he really elevates the material because you got John Jarrett on one hand playing a, 
a larger than life, over the top kind of performance, and then you get this guy who's grounding it back to reality. That's the thing, like, you can't have this movie just be Mick Taylor going bananas all the time because you lose that grip on reality and the dangers and all that. While well, this guy, yes. look at him. So, so if he's dumping yeah. a body, he's drooling, he's crying. Mm. It really makes he's you feel the, the situation that Mick has created, the actual horror and terror and the emotional impact it has on those around. That being said, though, would you watch a crossover between Wolf Creek and Looney Tunes? Uh, well, obviously. Where the Tasmanian Devil is oh, yeah. is Mick Taylor, <laughs> oh, and Mick Taylor actually goes with the Looney Tunes on an adventure. Uh, doing what? <laughs> well, I mean, killing all the non-Australian they, Looney Tunes. They could make up some like thing, but then Mick Taylor starts killing them, and that becomes the. Plot. And it's just a showdown between him and Yosemite Sam. <laughs> Tarnation. I reckon the actual. What do you cartoon. fucking say, you cunt? Tarnation. Just, I'll put your head on a stick and just stabs him in the what? side. <laughs> Yeah, I reckon in the actual cartoon they should make a, a villain as a cane tone and just have the Tasmanian t- um, you... devil just go after him and you know just like a Tweety Bird and uh, Sylvester Stallone thing, man. Like, <laughs> Sylvester, <laughs> Sylvester, Sylvester the cat? <laughs> no, Sylvester. Oh, sorry. Which one? <laughs> Sylvester's the cat's name, but he's not Sylvester Stallone the action. <laughs> oh yeah, star. I said that, didn't I? Whoops. No, it's me, Sylvester. Sylvester Stallone. Stallone. <laughs> hey, Tweety, go me. I'm gonna eat you. I was thinking, Vesta, yes. wouldn't it be great the if cat. this was done like how you know how they did RoboCop <laughs> where they got like kid friendly as the movies got on like I've heard they made that, the RoboCop yeah. but like in the original RoboCops they made a RoboCop kids show in which you taught you about the environment and shit wouldn't it be great if it was like Mick Taylor's <laughs> Outback Adventures and it's just him teaching you about like how to survive in the Outback and like how to treat nature right like here's step one you know you can't you can't camp in a national oh, the fire, park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't set fires, all right? She's like, you know, and because of the magnets on the ground, you can't keep TV out here. <laughs> and the last shot is him like fist pumping with a ring on his hands, like the power is yours. Yeah. <laughs> and like you see the dead planet he is behind him. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's like, and his is making Australia beautiful. And it's just like nothing but blood drenched sand in the back of blood drenched <laughs> dirt. <laughs> Making Australia red and beautiful. You like the red desert, eh? You like the red desert, do you, cunt? Which, by <laughs> the way, which means that there is another character that we are forgetting, and that is the Australian Outback itself. It's a character. Oh, yeah. It sets mood, and, you know, just fat ass character. Shots. Yeah. Hey. It takes it, up a lot of space, doesn't it? It's Sturt's Rest. Sturt's Rest, yeah. I love Sturt's Rest. Have you ever See, been to Sturt's like, Rest before? I've been to Cooper Petey. That's yeah, me nowhere too. near Sturt's Rest. So, have you been to Central Australia, Ryan? Nope. So, Bartek, you have. Oh, I call it the Northern Territory, but yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I've been to Central Australia, so it's like... You know, Is it like we... this? <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of nothing. Um, so, are you... There's to... Wait, are you big orange-reddish rock there. Are you telling me that there's a very slim chance that that girl would have found an English man at night randomly around the corner from where she was? Are you telling me that's a slim chance in the outback? Here they come. It is the same. It is the same one. That's great. This car is such a dick. I, I love how they're, they're also pissed about hitchhikers not picking you up, but like, uh, would, would you guys, like, when you're driving well, it's around... specifically this car. Picking up, picking well, up hitchhikers. Well, this is different. This guy doesn't look like a hitchhiker. He looks like a guy who's in distress. While those hitchhikers at the start... I don't feel sympathy for them because, like, well, you don't, you're not obliged to pick them up. But this guy, you should. This guy, you should be obliged to pull over. Yeah, because this is he's drenched in blood for a start. He's yeah. and he's, and obviously he's next to a car, so you know that he's not a hitch. He he might not be a hitchhiker. Maybe something. Uh, at cut. the same time, yeah. he's drenched in blood. And looks crazy. He looks like Shia LaBeouf. Look right. Oh, oh he does. Is... Oh, dude. Oh, I can't, I can't God, how, good this, how good this movie would be if it was done with Shia LaBeouf. Oh, where dude, I would hate Mick it. Taylor's like, all right, let's do some Aussie history. Question number one. Don't let your dreams be dreams. What? Yesterday you said tomorrow. And just gives Mick Taylor like the inspirational speech. And Mick Taylor's like, fuck, you changed my self-esteem. Now I'm a good guy. Just do it. Him... He only says quotes from that video. Just do it. <laughs> No, he also says, he also just, he also just wears a bag over his head that says, I'm not famous anymore, and that's about it. Yeah. Throughout the whole movie. Actually, I would like this movie more, because I don't like him as an actor. <laughs> oh, I love Shia <laughs> What? He got raped in that thing, too, and Mick Taylor freaking... 
Mick Taylor's like, yeah, call me a fucking... At what point would you be able to see that it's Mick Taylor driving yeah, the truck? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but maybe he... he... Well, this is what we call dramatic lighting. Yeah. Also, the long shot made it seem like the truck was even further away. Mm. It is far. But, I mean, like, here, it doesn't look as far, whereas the long shot, it's like, Whoa. But wait, guys, the other favourite character of the movie is about to show up in a brief scene, which is very good, because I was asking myself, how did Mick Taylor get a truck? And then it has a great little moment here in which he turns to the back of the truck, opens a little curtain, here it is, and says, thanks, blubber guts. <laughs> yeah, I love that guy. He was my favorite character. Yeah, he was one of my favorite... Stereotypical truck driver, right? Yeah, it's poor fat. guy. I want him to know his story. <laughs> Why yeah. did Mick Taylor... Like, poor Mick Taylor. He- Mick Taylor's killing his own people now. That truck driver wasn't... Uh, maybe... Oh, how good would it be if the truck driver was, like, some Japanese truck driver? And he's like... Yeah, fucking what? And just sushis them up. No, I think I think <laughs> Blubber Guts was uh, the name that he said to call him during sex. Call me Blubber Guts. <laughs> call me Blubber Guts, cause you blubber in my guts. <laughs> it's a jeep. Just so you know, zoom in a few more times to show us it's a jeep. So, how did you guys feel about the the kangaroos that are gonna come? Well, up? it reminded me of a great film. Possibly one of the best films. Not as good as Wolf Creek 2, but, you know, what is? Uh, a film made in Australia with CGI kangaroos called Kangaroo Jack. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, br- I thought of Kangaroo Jack earlier when there was swimming. But how good would it be if it was actually the same movies crossed into each other? So the kangaroo jumps with, like, the red jacket on, gets hit by Mick Taylor, and then you just hear Michael Shannon being like, Damn him. Now, that's a no, crossover the, I want to no, see. No, the kangaroo, the kangaroo lives, but he starts rapping. And then Mick Taylor's like, fucking didgeridoo out, and they just start rapping together. <laughs> <laughs> I legitimately don't know what's going on here. Like, they hear, the, they hear Mick Taylor's loud Yeah, rap, I thought he was, like, like, doing, like, magic or something, like, kangaroos, go. <laughs> but then he starts killing them, and I'm like, oh, no, he's not, he's well, not magic. Well, he, in all fairness, though, in... in in the first movie or in this movie, he establishes that he, he kills kangaroos all the time because there's, there's just far too many of them. Yeah, pests. Mm. Yeah, that's why we eat kangaroo meat, I guess. Just to summarise what I said, guys, um, you're not magic if you kill kangaroos. No, but you are magic if you get a joey. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, see, I didn't know. <laughs> so, is wow. this, is this oh, some of the God. reasonings why you like these movies? The cartoony, gross exploitation, ozploitation thrill? Well, the first one was anything but. The Excuse first one was e- me. Extremely bleak. Uh-oh. Excuse <laughs> me. Did you not see the part in which he shoots out her tire and goes. Uh, like uh, he goes, wing. He goes, like, winner, winner, chicken dinner, and then oh, walks up and ends her? Yeah, but I guess, like, the first one is way more bleak and dark. What, this than... isn't bleak? This Did you not see his rape dungeon? Well, that was yeah. really bleak! <laughs> yeah, but this one is, like, it's almost like a comedy, because we were kind of laughing at the kangaroo thing. I wasn't. I was crying. <laughs> I was like, that poor kangaroo. If it had a joey, it would be magical, but it didn't. I know for a fact. Don't worry, at the end. I was a... there. Don't worry, it says at the end. No you animals were, were harmed. It was all I good. I was the kangaroo. No animals were harmed. It's all good. This guy really does remind me of Shia LaBeouf, though. Yeah, he, yeah, I can't answer you. I was thinking to myself, I know this isn't Shia, but it would be great if it was Shia. And Shia just does Aussie movies now. Like, he appears in, like, the Kath and Kim movie. How good would that be? <laughs> so, Mick Taylor is played by uh, John Jarrett, who's done quite a lot of better things. You know, he's done... Uh, he was in McLeod's Daughters, yeah? He was in McLeod's Daughters. And this is quite... Like, the Mick Taylor character is quite a departure from his usual standard. Like, he's even said that he's not a big fan of horror movies. Like, mm. Psycho oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. scared Apparently, him as yeah. a kid. Psycho scared him. Boy. Boy. But this is arguably his most famous role. role. Yeah. Did you not see him in Django Unchained? <laughs> oh, yeah, he... As Oz, random Australian character with Quentin Tarantino, who's Australian, and the only reason was because Quentin Tarantino claims that this is one of his favourite horror... Like... The first one. The first one is his favourite horror movie, and he just really liked John Jarrett. I like how that trivia was mentioned for this movie, yeah. and not the first one. Like, the I first didn't... one is one of Quentin Tarantino's favourite movies. Oh, I didn't check the trivia for the first one. So it's in both. Yeah, it's in both. But like in the first in the first movie's trivia, it's like, this is considered to be one of Quentin Tarantino's favourite horror movies. Then in the second one, it's like, the first one is considered to be... <laughs> how great would it be if they had something like that for like a really long franchise, like all eight Harry Potter movies? It's like, like, the first Harry Potter is considered to be Quentin Tarantino's favourite <laughs> fantasy movie. 
for he's, all of them. Yeah. Here's something I want to know. Like, you know, what does Mick Taylor do in between the killings? Well, he's a he's he a pig t- shooter by trade. I he guess he turns into the wind and goes to the next part he, of the movie. No, yeah, kind of. He drives around to get. That's, that's his other caught. power that I didn't tell you about, Shane. Remember at the start where the police is like, oh, you're, you're a long way from home, and that's in the TV series too. He travels, travels around a lot. Yeah, but also in the in the movies, the lore is set that he lives very, 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 very far away from Wolf Creek itself. So what I gathered was he goes from his place to Wolf Creek to pick up his victims and then back again. It's very interesting to know what day-to-day life is for Mick. Like, what does he do when he wake up? When he wakes up? When he gets out of bed, it's like, what's the first thing Mick does? Um, On a day-to-day basis. Well, the second thing he does is, you know, he gets up, he kills some people, and stuff like that. The first thing he does is suck a dick. Um, His own dick? Any dick that he can find. Um, Like, you know, tourists. That's the thing I wanted to ask. Like, Wolf Creek, it's this big crater, but, like, in this movie, it's kind of there. It's not really talked about. So I guess if if we're calling this movie something that can be watched standalone, then I guess its significance would kind of be lost, because... I didn't really get what the point of it was. Mm. It's really just a location thing. That's yep. what it was yeah. in the first movie. In the first one, it's where he picks up his victims. From. Essentially, yes. He right. always goes to Wolf Creek, he disables their cars, and then takes them back to his place in the middle of nowhere and murders them and rapes them and whatever else horrors that he does. Is it a real place? Yes. Yeah, um, it's spelled with an uh, E, though. Yeah, with an E. Wolf. Oh, cool. With an E at the end. Um, no, please emphasize Wolf again so that we can hear the E. Wolf. <laughs> Wolf Creek. <laughs> Woofy Creek. <laughs> Woofy Woofy. Wolf A. It ma- makes me think of Terminator 2. Is Woofy okay? <laughs> Woofy's fine. It's like, your parents are dead. <laughs> What's that movie? I've seen that, that little clip where it's like, it's got on Leonardo DiCaprio and he's like, Woofy Woofy Woofy, it's my safe word. And the lady's like, I don't give a fuck about your safe word. Do you guys it, know that Is movie? that Wolf of Wall Street? I would imagine. Is, is that... Is, there, nah. there is a part in It's it what's even saying, eating Gilbert Grape. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a part in Wolf of Wall Street where he's trying to say a safe word. Oh, okay. That must be it. Yeah, yeah it's Wolfie. I thought it was from a different movie. Cause... No, it's from what's yeah. eating Gilbert Grape. Who would have known that the young child actor had a thing back then? But who do? By the way, this part here is... Um, really great because he could have just shot him in the face. <laughs> this is a perfect example of like the genre change. Um, you know... The first one was obviously just like a straight out horror slash or torture porn movie. This one's more of like a horror thriller, and it takes place in the daylight. Whereas the second, the first one was mostly in the dark. Yeah. I mean, there's some night scenes. This too, is but... now a cat and mouse game. Yeah. yeah. In I... which who's the cat and who's the mouse? The answer is there's a horse involved at one point. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is that Mick is the cat, and Paul's the... dick is the mouse. Why are you obsessed with dicks? I'm not Mickey's. No, it sounds like you're obsessed with dicks. Stefan, back me up here. Dick ha- Taylor. Have <laughs> I... Good response. Um, <laughs> have I brought up dicks this whole episode without referring it to Mick Taylor, Ryan? Yes. Did I? Yes. When? When we were talking about the guy's dick getting cut off and you're like, Ryan, you gotta, you got to make a, make a quote about that guy's dick. Well, I said that because <laughs> there's a shot in this movie where Mick Taylor is holding a dick. And he's like, You're drooling, yeah, Ryan! What the hell? Oh, that was great. <laughs> I'm drooling because last, last episode I literally spat in Bartek's face. Yeah, mm. you did. Uh, I'm drooling because this movie is so mouthwateringly lovely. It's kind of like, you know, when you talk about dick so much, your mouth can't help but water. <laughs> so, did we have a favourite moment in this entire movie? My one is the uh, the trivia one. I thought that was, I really like that one. The whole Aussie history, yeah, <laughs> Bartek, and the the bit just then with the truck. Yeah, I I won't say the goat lady again because you know that's a favorite, favorite character, character. But I won't say it's my favorite scene. I have to agree. The trivia bit, or oh, sorry, the quiz bit. I I enjoyed it. I mean, you you people who listen to this, you people who have listened to a lot of episodes know that I'm kind of like the quiz guy on the show. But that's not the reason why. It's just because it's such a... You're face-to-face with the killer, and he's not killing you yet. And he's talking to you, and they sing a song together, and it's just really bizarre. You weren't necessarily expecting it. You could see it's within the realm of possibility that Mick Taylor... Because, like I said earlier, laid-back character. So, I feel like he's kind of like a go-with-the-flow kind of guy. Hmm. Hmm. 
Like, hence why he kills people. And he has mercy on him, too, in a way. In a way where he's like, yeah, I'll let you go. In a way. Yeah, Yeah. we'll let you go to the other part of the dungeon, you (laughs) said at one point, yeah. I, uh... Yeah, those are all good points. So it's a good. Mo- that's a good moment in the yeah. film. But is it as good as when the when the main character is escaping through the tunnels and then that random woman just starts screeching? Oh, dude! Like I forgot that how was, freaky that was. She just like oh, gets no. up and she's like, Aah! "It was creepy." I wouldn't say it was as good a moment as the quiz. No, nah, it's better. You know why? Because then he hits that woman in the back of the head with a hammer and kills her, and she gets impaled <laughs> on many, many sharp sticks. I think I think those sticks were bamboo, right? Bamboo. So you know, where did he fucking get them in the outback? Just from bamboo. the Chinese people he killed, Ryan. They always yeah, have bamboo. From foreigners. From foreigners yeah, you know, yeah. he always uses their shit. All foreigners carry around things from their country. No, I think I really did like that moment with the screeching lady because that was actually a moment that genuinely terrified me. Yeah, like yeah. I, I wasn't expecting it. I think that's why I liked it so much. Like this movie was un—it wasn't—it was un—it was unsettling to watch, but I was never genuinely like ah. Oh, but that one—that one got me. That one was genuinely terrifying for me. You didn't find the scene where he's holding a dick terrifying? No, I found it erotic. Ah, Think <laughs> of erotic. How about this? This is erotic or? How do they make the lamp stand up like that? Oh, well, right. Bartek, I mean, it's cold science. Ah, uh, we should have Oliver on this show. He knows about silence. No, they're Christian house. I said silence. I, I slurred it. They're the Christian silence. household. There's no science here. Yeah, Bartek, but there is plenty of silence. Exactly. Should we, should, we say, should we say a prayer? Yeah, go on. Yeah, say grace for this lovely meal. All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. Or if you're in America, um, Amen. Or if you're in Australia, can. <laughs> Look, it's the plural of man is men, so you gotta say uh, uh, not a man, it's a men. No, you're amen. saying amen, men, and you're saying a man. A man. Yeah, but you, you look, men is the can. plural. All you, right, you can't say a before the plural. The holy fa- you say the men. The holy fa- the holy fa- the holy fucking spirit. Can. Lord, we want to thank you for this meal that you've given us, and God bless you so much, God. And the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Oh, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> it was like really short and sincere. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was gonna be like full serious. Then I'm do you like... think they? Do you think they? They looked at his dick when they undressed him. At any point? This is the thing I often ask myself: Would characters wake up unconscious and they've been completely changed? Just like at what point did these people just go just take off his clothes and? Uh, like, do they on purposely not look at his junk, yeah. or do they look at it? Do they accidentally touch it? Do they on purposely? You know they were like a kid, though. There was like a, a kid now. There was a gag like that in Tokyo Godfathers as well. So really, there was a gag like that in Green Hornet as well. When he's like, "Did you change me?" Oh yeah, and yeah. that movie had a lot of you know homoeroticism between the two. of But them. this movie has a lot of Jesus apparently in it. They probably see him like he's like the, he's, he's his son or a... something. They probably had a teenage son that moved out of home, moved to the city. Yesterday, I also saw Snowden in the cinema. I'm trying to make comparisons between the two. Well, movies. this uh, movie has white people. Oh, they're, uh, they're both Snowden. based on real events. Oh, there you go. True, I remember they, when yeah. Snowden was stuck in the outback with Shia LaBeouf and Mick Taylor was chasing him for Rubik's Cube. Yeah, Mick Taylor, the Rolling Stones mm-hmm. guitarist, of course. And then yeah. he revealed all the information about Mick Taylor. And he's just like... I'm going to spread this into Hollywood or into Aussie wood or whatever we call our Australian film industry with wood in it. Yeah, we need that's a how, name. That's how dull We literally call it the Australian film industry. That's true. Like, they have Hollywood, they have Bollywood, and you know, Nigerian... They have, Tolly- they have like, all the Hollywoods. Nigerian cir- cinema is literally called Nollywood. Yeah, it's um, always Hollywood with a letter at the start. Ours should just be called Mollywood after Molly Meldrum. Aussie wood. No, We could call Molly it a a a Oli, Like, a Aoli would. <laughs> like Aoli. Oh, yeah. I didn't know we loved Aoli that much yeah. in Christ and other countries. Why don't you just A-Aussie. call it... Kangarollywood. Aolywood. Beerwood. Beerwood. I actually would like to see that <laughs> cinema... That, 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 whatever they make, they're always beer-related movies. Yeah, did you hear Beerwood's got a new movie out? It's called Mission Improbable. And it's just about Tom Cruise's severe drinking habit and he's still doing Mission Impossible movies. I'd watch the fuck out of Beerwood movies just to see how they can relate. Like, they do, like, their version of Schindler's List, but it somehow involves beer. 
And it's just like, you know, Schindler's got a list of beer that he must drink before the war is over. So what would the... <laughs> How good would that be? <laughs> what would the Snowden one be? Like, he's revealing information about beer? No, 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 no. Snowden is still releasing information about the government. But the government... De- like, the government just gets all of America drunk. <laughs> they're like, release beer into the water supply. <laughs> and they all forget. Or they're just too drunk to care. Here's my favorite part. They live in the desert. It must be like a gajillion degrees and they make him warm soup. <laughs> That's like the best part. They make him a hearty soup. They're like, oh, I thought this would cheer you up. you got to get your strength. Really? It's not a lot of soup either. Yeah. Well, just to get him on his toes, you know? Get him on his toes. They don't even know what's happened. Here's my favorite thing. Mick Taylor, again, the first one, very different breed of creature. But in this one, Mick Taylor's the kind of guy who's like, I see a house. The kid's obviously in there. I'm going to stand out front and say, you in there, hero? Instead of like walking up to the house, pretending to be someone I'm not, and then getting in and killing them all. See, I was confused there because I was wondering, was that in his head or did that actually happen? Yeah, I also was like that, but then the guy was like, so nonchalant about getting up, but then he grabbed a rifle, I'm like, well, well, he's... It's a shotgun, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. You know, shotgun. He grabbed his gun and was just like, oh, okay, so it must yeah. be real. Oh, you got another shot, there's two, remember yeah, that? So oh, there's two. You know, you know the rule, if you show a gun in the cabinet... There must be two, and then in the third act, the second one gets fired, right? That's how it works. What a badass. Who, Mick Taylor, or this old man? Well, the old man. Look well, at yeah, it. remember, Stefan yeah. said this is his favourite character. I liked how the old man is clearly set up to have, like, heart condition as well. I actually thought he was going to have a heart attack, and yeah. then Mick Taylor's like, well, that's fucking easy. Just <laughs> <laughs> walk over and be like, right, get this started. Look, oh, my heart, my heart, my poor heart. Like, maybe that was the actor. Maybe there's a sequel where it's like he did survive, but then immediately gets a heart attack. Yeah, I survived a headshot. Did I leave that door unlocked or what? Yeah, yeah. that's what you do in Australia. He lives in the fucking desert. What else would you do? He's going to break into your house. Yeah, well, that's true. But like, you see a dangerous man... Yeah, you'd lock your doors, right? I wouldn't have even left until he went into the far, far, far distance. Yeah. Why didn't they just go straight to the car? Well, that's what they're trying you to do. You got the keys. For no, go. Oh, he's getting the keys. That's what he's doing. Yeah, he's gonna Look get... at his run. I love his run. He's just like, see? Like, yeah, the oh, yeah, and open. the door's clearly open. Yeah, yeah he must have left it That's lot. not the first thing he noticed. Uh-oh, spaghetti So, right, if you made this film, would you have put that sniper... Oh, sorry. Would you have put Mick's rifle in the cabinet just to confuse him more? Or no, I think putting it there is fine. Okay. I think it would have been better if Mick was in the cabinet. <laughs> And he's like, surprise, motherfucker! And the guy's like, something's different about this cabinet. <laughs> and he opens it and he goes, grabs, like, John Jarrett on the nose and goes, this isn't my rifle. <laughs> no, 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 you'd have to grab his dick. Okay, enough with the oh, dick. Oh, damn. That was damn. Poor lady. That was like, this poor lady's got her period happening. Oh, she just God. shot blood everywhere. <laughs> I thought she would have yeah, been on her menopause well. by now. <laughs> so, John Jarrett is... Implicating he doesn't mind old ladies, does he? He has sex with anything. Men, women, pigs. Come on, use the character's name at least. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mick Taylor. No. Mickey, no. Mickey Moon. John Jarrett. Oh, really? <laughs> Did you know John Jarrett likes having sex with I, look, pigs? All, I knew that. I, it's just that I read online that apparently he's nothing like Mick Taylor. So. Yeah, Mick Taylor doesn't have sex with pigs. Yeah, he's, he's, Did you know he, he shoots them? That's yeah, the difference. John Jarrett's more of a lover, not a fighter. Is, was that on Better Homes and Gardens? Is he on Better Homes and Gardens? Apparently. As John Jarrett or as Mick Taylor? I didn't know. You know they How did to make home. your home better. When Get t- rid of the fucking poms. <laughs> when a TV series came out, um, they did a Wolf Creek pop-up bars where you could go and mm. get a few beers and hang out with Mick Taylor. Yeah. And was it actually bars. John Jarrett? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, J- John Jarrett came um, I didn't get to go. It was in Melbourne and Sydney. I wanted to go, though. And, and could... what was going to happen? Like, uh, just, uh, did people disappear? Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> no, just, just... It wasn't the city, so no, people aren't going to disappear in the city. But here's the thing. John Jarrett's... I mean, Mick Taylor's never been to Sydney. That's established in the movies, so, you know. That's now, true, this yeah. is an iconic scene. This is, like, the typical Australian image of, you know, the guy riding the horse who's got a whip, the hat, the sun. It's gorgeous shot. That's probably one of the best shots in the movie. And then it's instantly night. <laughs> 
Which is kind of disappointing, because imagine this scene, like, this scene works with him and the torch and all that, but I wouldn't mind this scene shot, like, just, just when the sun's setting. I agree. I think that would have been cool. And then, you know, you could feel John Jarrett even more imposing with, like, shadows over... But that's just me. And not Mick Taylor. John yeah. Jarrett. Maybe, like, the budget was too low. They and just ran out of time and they didn't want to pay anyone for an extra day. Too bad Maybe they wasted why. that money on that guy's head exploding at yeah. the start. Or on the horse. <laughs> yeah. And and they should have put the sniper rifle in the cabinet. Did you know the horse was the most... Uh, uh, the, like, the highest paid actor in this whole entire project? Did you know that when you said the word did, you sound like Josh Peck? <laughs> I do a good Josh. Did you know I do a good Josh Peck impersonation? Huh? I do a good Josh Peck impersonation. Yeah. Like ten year old Josh Peck. It's oh, like, yeah. oh, I did you do it yet? You know, I, I ended up going back and like finding out what exactly his first line was. It's like, man, oh man of La Mancha, which man, is an oh, old man of La Mancha, which apparently is a really old movie that Josh, young Josh Peck, just happens to know. So back to how Josh Peck isn't in this movie, Stefan. Do you think this movie could have been a bigger box office draw and success if Josh Peck was in it? Oh, dude, absolutely. With with, with Drake, with, Drake with, with the name Star Power and the actual Pecks of, from John Peck, like no, not um, John Peck, Josh Peck. <laughs> sorry, Josh Peck. Sorry, yeah, with John his, Jared, Josh, John, Josh, <laughs> and his dad is Gregory Peck. Yeah, <laughs> hey, is Josh Peck related to Gregory Peck? John Jared, John Peck. Where he's yeah. like, oh, can you imagine Josh Peck in the new To Kill a Mockingbird as Atticus Finch? And he's like, oh man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> Oprah! <laughs> Oprah! <laughs> Watch out, Oprah. So, enough about Josh Peck's lack of being in this movie. More about the movie itself. Um, what was your feelings of the movie when you finished it, Bart? Considering you hadn't seen the first one, so you had nothing to draw comparison to either. Did you like it? What did it give you? So you were specifically talking about the movie itself, not the ending. No, the movie itself. The movie as a whole. Um, not I'll... that. What the ending? Did. We'll talk about the ending because Stefan has a big thing about it. But what the, as a whole, what did you feel about the movie after you finished? It? I I felt I felt good about it. Like I'd heard, I'd heard many things about this movie from mostly Stefan, but just over the place. Shut up, Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> and like I I actually didn't really know what it was about. So, when, before I watched this movie, I did my thing of, like, what's the genre? And it's, like, it's an Australian horror movie. I'm like, okay, I don't know what the horror is. And then when the movie started, you know, there was the bad cops. There was Mick Taylor. Uh, Mick Taylor pulled a knife out of his, you know, glove compartment thing. So I was like, oh, okay, so maybe he's the villain. Um, maybe. Remember, Most... I haven't seen the first one. I don't know anything about the series, so I... Honestly, for most of this movie, I was still trying to memorize Mick Taylor's name. <laughs> um, so yeah, I walked out being like, "Yeah, this was this was a good horror movie. It had like that atmosphere thing. The villain had elements, kind of like what we were talking about with Bloodnovsky back when we did the Green Hornet. You know, he has insecurities. He's got like kind of a quirkiness about him, but like prejudice. He, but he doesn't mess around when it comes to killing. So yeah, it was." For a horror movie, it was good. Did it scare you? Um, I mean, it, I felt the parts of it that were like thrillerish, were like where the guy was running away and you like you really felt for him. I don't know if I was necessarily scared. Oh mm. well, Stefan, did you Man. did you get scared? You know what? When when I was thinking, oh, I'm glad I picked this movie. Then I was like watching, it, and then you see like in the opening scene. In, not the opening part where he, where he kills like the the German tourists. I'm just like, oh man, I'm starting to regret my decisions now, because you know it's it's pretty gory, it's pretty. Well, you should have watched it with Jono. You know how he can't handle scary yeah, movies. That's true. He, uh, he's been on this podcast, yeah. Yeah, Green yeah, we had Jono on the podcast. Yeah. yeah, he can't handle scary movies. We should have done a scary movie with Jono, <laughs> and then made him watch it and then do it again. Yeah, so, do it on next April Fool. Just like, okay, we're gonna watch like I don't know Tangled or something. Come on, Jono, underappreciated. And then. <laughs> And then, nah, sorry, it's uh, tangled as in, like, wrap, put your hands around as your as neck in, and choke As in, like, you. barbed wire tangled yeah, around exactly. person's We're going to watch dick. barbed wire with uh, Pamela Anderson, <laughs> the Casablanca <laughs> remake. So, it didn't scare you. It scared me. It scared me. I mean, this is intense. Like, where is Mick? Is he in the shadows behind him? Is he in front of him? He doesn't know, and I don't know either, and that's intense. You know, you can't see his legs. Maybe Mick's on his knees. Maybe Nick has given this guy a bit of a, you know... A finger up the butthole. We don't see this guy's butt. 
Maybe that guy, this is why the guy's squirming so much. Maybe Mick Taylor's got his full on fist up there, being like, I play you like a puppet, but we don't know. Oh, he's got the, he's got the singlet on, though. The, the with the beater. Yes, and this is the first real time in the movie we've seen him without his hat on? Yeah, he's grey. Well, he was grey in the first one yeah. as well. <laughs> In this one, though, does he does he not make you think that he could play Wolverine's dad, though? How good would Mick, I mean, how good would John Jarrett be as Wolverine's dad? Where it's just like, oh, I'm Wolverine's fucking dad. Yeah, in, in this I scene, he, that. he reminded me of someone, but I just can't put my finger on it. Uh, Wolverine. I, I, I literally just said. He reminds me of Glenn Robbins, who's the Australian comedian who plays Kel in Captain Kim. He has a very similar hairstyle. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, when you say <laughs> Kel, I think of Keenan and Kel. Yes, it's Keenan and Kel. This comedic duo is in a horror movie in the art back. He plays a black guy. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Bold insight from Bartek there. Well, bringing I'm back the old you, racism jokes from the old days. Some race, I was telling you why I was laughing, and then <laughs> when you were explaining, me. I'm like, oh, you didn't mention the obvious thing that he's black. I didn't have to, Bartek. It's, it's like, it's like Scooby-Doo 2 all over again. It's like, he's... <laughs> black he's white or whatever you said about Seth Green <laughs> yeah, but it was different what's what, what's Seth Green again is he white or black Seth Green is white Will Smith is black no the answer is green is he related to Tom Green because then he'd be related to Mick Taylor and then it's all tied back to Josh Peck somehow <laughs> do you um I know when when you uh if you ever hang out with me but I think and I do. Um, we we'd uh, walk around and this be like this scary place at night and be like oh Wolf Creek Wolf Creek don't know if you're around for that, but that's what he's saying. Does he do say. that? No. Does wait, wait. Well, are you telling me Stefan's a fucking liar? Stefan, are you a liar? Actually, now that you mention it, maybe you would have done it. Wolf Creek. Oh my god, Wolf Creek. Yeah. When you, when you go it to sounds whoop, whoop, like something you do. Yeah, yeah. Whoop Whoop, and it's like dark place, and it's like I've never been to Whoop Whoop like, with you, but yeah. Wolf no. Creek, Wolf Creek. Imagine when you guys go down to the city in Melbourne, you're like, oh, we're at the train station. Oh, Wolf Creek, bro, Wolf Creek. <laughs> Wolf Creek, the remember city, this populated city in Wolf Creek? Oh, yeah, definitely. Just imagining us like sitting down watching like 60s Adam's Family, you see the house, and it's like, oh, Wolf Creek. I'm like, it's fun, it's the Adam's Family. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if you did it with everything? It's like it's like an ad for Retrovision. Oh, Wolf Creek, Wolf Creek. <laughs> and you just find out that Stefan is a vegetable and all he can say is Wolf Creek. And then we walk Creek. And then he finally sits down and we watch Wolf Creek and he's like... Oh, Adam's family. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to go a completely different direction. I thought it would just be like, he just sits there drooling, and then the movie <laughs> ends, and he's just like, and he just goes, Wolf. right, that was enough. <laughs> and it was like a gag he's been playing on you for 10 years. Wolf Creek, with the, with the E, though. Wolf Creek. Yeah, got to yeah, <laughs> got to emphasize on the Wolf E. Wolf Creek. Maybe we can like sit down watch a gay porno. Then so, like who knew that Wolf Creek was a musical? I, mean, I I did not, despite the montage. People were kind of song. people were kind of pissed off about this part because you know really Rolf, no because of Rolf Harris because um, you know this is obviously a Rolf ha- Rolf Harris song yeah you know, he'll get royalties from this or whatever and, fuck you know, Rolf Harris he's yeah, in prison like, yeah well yeah what's Rolf is going to do but this is kind of before or just beginning well, on the point I, of I Rolf know, Harris's like, downfall because this uh, they would have made this like what 2012, 2013 Ryan, do you want to explain Rolf Harris to the people who aren't well he's pretty Rolf big Harris though. is a painter who painted the Queen and he played the wobble board and is a songwriter and he's Mick Taylor's hero is that a fair fair pretty thing much. to say He's Bartek, an, he's Bartek's hero. He's got an aria that was taken away from him. Oh, uh, so. yeah, tragic. Who would have thought Timey Kangaroo Downsport won an aria, but who knew? Aria is an award for well, those he, he was, not he, in, he the was in the know. Aria Hall of Fame, but then he got... Who isn't in the Aria Hall of Fame? Mick Taylor's there for his rendition of Timey Kangaroo Downsport. <laughs> and Shia LaBeouf's in there too, for some reason. Uh, even though he's not in this movie, Shia LaBeouf has got an aria. So... This is the lead up to the iconic quiz. Mm. Now, how did you think that he was going to escape this, Bartek? Well, he kept reaching for the hammer, so I thought maybe the hammer will do something. And it did, but how did you think that he was going to get the hammer being all tied up? Well, he managed to befriend Mick and get his hands free, so... And he, this is a long scene, so at this point I was like, I don't know what he'd do. When his hands got free, he's like, well, now, oh, the possibilities are just endless. The fact that he's, like, sacrificed his own finger to get the hammer was pretty cool. What? Like, I thought it was intense. Yeah, like, that's it's like, true. Did he, other hand, other did hand. He, 
Yeah, did he sacrifice the finger or did it was just like an opportunity? No, because he, like he was gonna lose a finger either no, way. No, he did it on purpose. He, he to get yeah to, to get untie. the hammer yeah. to get him to untie his hand. That's why it's like it's Don Bradman, bitch. He on purpose gave oh. the wrong answer, knowing that his finger would get sacrificed, but that would get him the ability to get the hammer. Ah. Oh, I thought that actually like came to him afterwards. So I didn't. Re- yeah, I didn't no think about it that way. No, no, I I knew from I I I knew from the moment that he got cut free. That was a ta- tactic for him to get the hammer. That's why it's like do the other finger, do the other hand, Mick. Because like if he just got it, like he wouldn't have done it that way. Because if he got this question right about the cricket, he would be able to be let go, allegedly. Which could mean anything. Which could mean anything, but in his brain he thought he could be let go and that wouldn't have given him the opportunity to kill Mick. And I think at this point, after having his finger sawn off the first time, he had decided properly that he was going to kill Mick. I figured, I related it to myself because I thought if I was in this situation, I would be like, duh, 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 and then he would have cut my finger off. Then as soon as my finger went off, I'd be like, oh, I can't, it's Don Bradman, damn it. Damn it. No, I that, think by the I way thought. he delivered the line like it's Don Bradman bitch in that kind of heroic take yeah, that motherfucker. Your, okay. your explanation puts more like a, yeah, yeah. And it yeah. adds weight to the character more so like he's just as cunning as Mick in a different vein though. Like he's willing to sacrifice his own body parts to outsmart Mick. He's singing the national anthem now and, and even and Mick's Mick, just like I fucking hate this. When I That's when funny. I went to see uh, Snowden last night there was an ad before the movie it was fucking cringeworthy well I found it cringeworthy it was like it was an ad for I think tomatoes or something Australian oh it's classic ads for tomatoes you know that <laughs> you remember the tomato ad yeah. oh, my favourite ad it was it was like it showed a bunch of footage of like Australian countryside and stuff like that and a girl with freckles and <laughs> some girl was just like reciting the national anthem really slowly and I saw vo- that ad too yeah. when I went to the cinema and the voice was just like kind of Australian she wasn't singing it on. no it was like Australians all let us rejoice Australians all let us rejoice she wasn't like oh, that she, she was like... dude she was she wasn't she was she was more like Ow, Australia! It sounded Let like us rejoice. It sounded like something was damaging her throat. <laughs> Dick, apparently, according to your world. No, she's in, not with in Taylor. both movies. In both movies, I find it quite disturbing. Sorry, what, what both movies? Oh, both Small movies of these. Sorry, I find it quite disturbing that Mick is not afraid of killing children. Like that's the thing that I'm like, oh, okay. Because in both movies, it's set up that he's killed whole families of tourists. Like, uh, and in this, you, you see know that he children wasn't... tied up to chains and poles and all that. That's so it's the plot kind of... of the TV show, too. At the very start, he kills an entire family. It's just so. kind of very full-on. Like, I know it's full-on. Like, he does lots of full-on things, but the whole kid killer thing, that makes him on another level. And the next step would be cannibalism to make him even more and more. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Doesn't he joke about eating people? I can't remember, but he mainly feeds them to his dogs. That's the main thing he does. I never got... Well, in these movies, I don't know about the show, I never got the feeling that he eats them. I just feel like he uh, tortures them and then feeds them to his dogs and whatever, rapes them and all, and just makes their lives living hell for months on end, then disposes of them. But killing kids is like a next step level, and yeah. that's just like a thing they casually throw out there with Mick Taylor. Like, oh yeah, and he kills kids. You know, just uh, absorb that in. Just absorb it in. Also, the sexual violence thing. A lot of these, um, sometimes there's there's like a line that he's trying to avoid doing the sexual violence thing as well. Mm. But this, the, you know, Mick Taylor pretty much goes there. In the last movie, he, he kind of goes there as well. Oh, he goes there in every movie, man. Yeah, yeah. In all two movies. I can't wait, can't wait for Wolf Creek 3 to happen in which it's like, and Mick Taylor goes on a holiday. <laughs> like, what happens if there's... Maybe there should be a crossover between Wolf Creek and Mad Max. Yeah, Woof Max, in which Max has been bitten by Mick Taylor and becomes a Woof Man. The Mad Creek. I kind of yeah. like that title, Woof Max. <laughs> Woof. Watch out, it's Woof Max. Rawr. <laughs> Watch out, it's Mel Gibson as Woof Max. Rawr, rawr. Yeah, yeah imagine the, chase, the car chase scene. That'd be awesome. Yeah. No, there is no car chases. It's just all running on foot <laughs> in the desert. and But you still have the flame guitar guy there for some reason. And he's just on a truck by himself in the desert. <laughs> and it's just like, ah, oh, run. It's Wolf Max. 
And he's just like, Wolf Max turns into Wolf Max every time that there's a blood red moon in the sky in the Australian Outback. And freaking Mick Taylor just keeps painting that moon red, so it's always With Rolf Harris. <laughs> with paint, yeah, with Rolf Harris. Yeah, I feel like this is the <laughs> only time in history that, well, no pun intended, that majoring in history actually helps someone. Excuse me. <laughs> you do history? I do history. No, I don't know. Excuse <laughs> me. What was the pun? There was there When was... I said this is the first time in history, I was like, oh, wait, pun. I didn't even mean to say that. But yeah. Um, because it's history. Yeah, it's history. Bartek doesn't understand English very well, Stefan, because mm. he's a stinky immigrant. In Polish, the word pan means mister or man. Does it? Yeah. So you'll well, be pan Slewinski. Well, pan Kathrashak. Did he yeah, get, did I had he, no, did he get your I name no follow up. correct? Did he even get it close to being correct? I mean, they're always close. They just never get right. Kathrashak. Yeah, it's like with my name too. Was it like, do I need like extra flans? Kathrashak. Well, no, okay. it's it's more you've got to say it with an accent. That's what you got to uh, do. Yeah, it's the, it's the middle part where people can't get the psh right. Right, you drool, you spit. It's Bartek Casper. Oh, we're up to the intense fourth question. Oh, the real question of why. And what was the answer in the end? Because they're a bunch of pommy cans. Yeah. Which but, is but you know the what? best answer. But you know what? He still gives it to him. Like, you got it correct, and I'll give it to you. Like, you got four out of and four But so it gives far. him the shit. So. But, but it gives him the shit, so he cuts a finger off anyway. Tick tuk. <laughs> that was something he said. Man, I thought he was going to die. I didn't think he was going to escape. Oh, don't give it away. <laughs> the people who are listening to this may not have seen it. And that's We're talking about Mick Taylor. Mistake. We're talking about Mick Taylor. Yeah. Oh, Mick Taylor never dies. He's always just going to fade. You're giving it away, Ryan. Fuck. Nope. There's this mini series. Come on. While we're on the it's subject, are uh, either of you guys... Do you, either of you guys interested in the TV series? Because it's quite good, I must say. Is it is it, so? It is a prequel series. Um, no, I it think it's set in the one day and then yeah, it flashes back to prequel stuff. Um, the only like flashback is in the last episode when they talk about Mick Taylor's past, like how uh, he became. Did he was he actually on that farmland that is like six days to travel across? <laughs> well, yeah, he, he he's um obviously he's in the outback and it's far away and Wouldn't uh, you be surprised if he was actually in Melbourne? I think his family was a bus- was businessman or something, like rich. And uh Oh you know, boy, his fingers coming off. Uh, if it's in Melbourne he could have a crossover with um Romper Stomper. Yeah? Yeah. Was Romper Stomper in Melbourne? Well set in Footscray, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I would like a crossover between this and many movies. My Fair Lady, Sound of Music. So many musicals. Surf Nazis Must Die. Grease. Grease. Man, we'll bring back Paul Hogan. Have a Crocodile Dundee Wolf Creek crossover. I could go with a crossover with Flipper as well. (laughs) It's not a musical, but... There is a musical of Flipper. Oh, with Happy Feet, yeah? Ooh. It's called Flipper, Da Musical. <laughs> da Musical? <laughs> what, is it made by Ali G? <laughs> if we can do another... No, s- it's made by Sporty Spice. Oh, okay. If we can do another Australian property, why can't we do, like, a Wolf Creek Happy Feet crossover and, like, have oh! it, like, half, half animated, half live action yeah. thing? <laughs> everyone, and- everyone except for Mick Taylor is animated. It's kind of <laughs> like Mick Taylor walks through an imaginary, like, through his own cave door and it's like animated Nick Taylor's from like a 90s FMV <laughs> <laughs> and he sees oh oh this is for real diehard Australian fans but like wouldn't it be great if he walked in and you just heard him walk through a door and then you just hear cheese TV <laughs> and, he just, and he falls through the cheese TV opening sequence and he's going around killing Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z characters and he's just like Fucking non Aussies! Fucking cats! And just awesome. going through each anime ever. And ca- I want Mick Taylor takes on anime. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Is it foreign too? <laughs> also, fun fact Mick um, Taylor goes to Tokyo Godfathers. Yeah. Fun fact uh, the Cheese TV guys, Jane Wright, like they have a podcast, and one of their recent guests was. Mick uh, Taylor? Was no John Jarrett's son actually? What and Mick Jarrett? <laughs> um, I, I, I can't Mick remember. His, I can't remember his name. <laughs> he he but based it, it on his own son. John Jarrett's son manages manages him, and uh, his John Jarrett's wife is that woman from Play School, I think, right? Which no. one? There's so mm. many. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Noni the, Hazelhurst. The one when I was growing up with Noni Hazelhurst. Yeah, yeah. yeah Fuck was, a duck. Who knew? She's like the Logies. 
Everyone's at the lo- yeah. <laughs> Everyone's at the Logies. I love that with John Jared at the Logies. Maybe yeah. Mick Taylor should appear in like a remake of the Take on Me music video as the like bad guy instead of the random you know helmet wearing guy with a wrench. No, he should do the crazy frog, <laughs> <laughs> where he's like, <laughs> 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 but he does it. No, no, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Bloody foreigners. You're doing it wrong. Oh, you gotta do the Mick Taylor version. You gotta do the Mick Taylor version, which is said they're like, what is it? The Ming 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 Ming. He said that he's. And it's just his laugh. <laughs> and it's a chainsaw instead of the motorcycle. So this is how sad I am. I memorized the crazy frog when I was young. Well, everyone remembered it because he had a so. dick. No, I memorized how it went. Talking about dicks, crazy frog had a dick. He did. That was random. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, they would censor it. Like no, no, oh, no, not always. Not always. Not always. Every time I saw it, it wasn't censored. No, I know that we stepped away from the movie, but can we go back to 2004 <laughs> where they had ads for random things you could get on your mobile <laughs> phone? Like, oh my god, like, god. hey, do you? No, 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 no ringtones, but like random, like. I guess you would call them apps now, yeah, but back then, but it's like just that. like, hey, do you want a monkey that can go ooh, ooh on your phone, <laughs> or do you want one that turns everyone into a cat that meows, like, you know what I mean, and there were ads on TV for them, or yeah. do you remember those ads for DVDs, where it's like, hey, for, you know, 12 part deal, you can get all of Hello, hello on DVD, or like, you can get Hogan's Heroes, and there were ads that go for like five minutes. But back to, I guess, finger cutting. We're oh. always going back to when the guy's finger's getting cut. Look at that. Mm. Blood splat. This, so, yeah, this is the clever one where he chooses the other hand. Yeah, and look, he's like, oh, my fucking arms. They're really sore from being my finger cut off. Yeah. And if Mick Taylor told him to stop whinging, you know, he's not Australian, so he so he stop. No, he's a pommy. He's weak as piss. Yeah, so he'd cry even harder. Do you find it interesting that the main character is English and Mick Taylor doesn't know that until the very end of the movie? Really? Like, until, like, this part of the... Like, just before he knocks him out, he didn't know he would chase. He was chasing a person that he would hate even more. Also, just in case anyone doesn't know, pom or pommy refers to English people. It's Australian. No. P- no everyone knows. Well, just, like, you know, foreign... Look, people. I'm not going to translate everything for the fucking foreign audience that listens to this. Didgeridoo means shut up! Well, <laughs> I will. Oh, uh, you can translate it into Polish. Yes, well, to those listening from a Democratic Republic of Congo and North Korea and, uh, I don't know, Hungary, thank you for listening. <laughs> we, we have had it. a listener from South Korea. From South Korea. Oh, thank you very much. How is it in South Korea? Tell us. Is it is it true that North Korea sends you air balloons full of cigarette butts <laughs> and handwritten insults? Oliver's been to South Korea. We can ask him next time he's on. Oh, that's true, yeah. Who's Oliver. I'm sorry, Jennifer Peter. Oh, Jennifer Peter, my favourite of Bartek's guests, who are also his friends. Dude, so, Stefan's right there. I'm sorry, G'day, Stefan. Mate. Yeah, he's my friend, though. Oh, yeah, okay. good day to you, mate. So, Stefan, tell us more about what is it about these films that you love so much? Like, what? Why is it the? Why is it the Wolf Creek property that gets your blood flowing? <laughs> Um, yeah, it gets the hormones flowing. Are you a sadistic how... motherfucker? Yeah, uh, obviously. And uh, the, I guess like because it's, it's uh, Australian. I, I like um, good Australian uh, properties. Because this, 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 um, this is iconic. I mean, you can you yeah. can walk around and you can hear people go, the guy from Wolf Creek, and you know what they're talking about. Yeah. Well, this is the guy I'll, from I'll, Wolf Creek. I'll say this of Stefan. He he wants to see good Australian content. Mm. Well, Stefan, have you watched The Wog Boy? Yeah, yeah have you? Uh, I haven't. I've seen Super Wog on Fuck YouTube. you. Have you not watched Wog Boy 2? The Knights of Mykonos? We, next time you're on this show, we know what we're doing. <laughs> we're doing Wog Boy 2, The Knights of Mykonos. <laughs> How have you not even seen it, man? You fucking say that you like Australian content. Get out of my <laughs> podcast! Have you even seen... Because they're Wogs, mate. They're have you wogs. ever seen Boy Town? No. Oh, that's nah. it. That's it. I'm off. Have you seen? That's it. I'm out of here. Have you seen Two Hands? <laughs> two Hands. No. Oh. Wait. So, what Australian movies have you seen? Mad Max. <laughs> well, that's it. That's all that Australia has to offer. Lantana. You haven't uh, even seen. Oh. Uh, what about two. Rumpa Stumper? I've got that on DVD. I uh, I'm trying to think. Uh. Do you only like a horror movie Australia stuff? Because no, there's a great movie called Loved Ones, which is great. You'd love it if you love this. I'm just trying to think, man. Like, there's probably like heaps like just can't. The think Great of the top Gatsby. Of my head. Yeah. <laughs> Moulin Rouge. Australia. Finding, finding Nemo. Finding Dory. Yeah, 
That's kind of Australian, I suppose. Finding way. Finding John Jarrett. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not it's John Jarrett's doing the finding. Which, do you want it. to do a crossover between... Finding Nemo and Finding John Jarrett? No, no, no. Between Wolf Creek and Where's Wally? <laughs> where's... That could have worked. Um, where's, where's... Or if you're American, where's Waldo? Even where's Wally Johnny? Where is Johnny on this episode? Okay, one Australian movie that's come to mind. Yeah, I got one. You guys seen Animal Kingdom, yeah? Yes, I've seen Animal Absolutely Kingdom. Absolutely fantastic movie. Yeah, but it's no, it's no Wog Boy. <laughs> Two. It's also like Two one of those bleak no. Aussie. You know, like Australian movies have a um, that the reputation bleak for being sensibility? bleak. sensibility. Yeah, like Animal Kingdom is definitely one of those. This doesn't help either. The dressmaker, bleak as fuck. Mm. What was the name of that? Nick Ginopoulos movie where he it's like a Wiggles thing the Wallabies Wannabies yeah the Wannabies I don't know that you haven't even seen The Castle I haven't seen The Castle like since like oh my god well, dude, no, for like 15 years I think he's, he's seen a bunch of Paul Fennick shows right uh, yeah I've seen like every episode of Pizza have you seen Fat Pizza the movie yeah we should do Fat Pizza the movie Reese has oh, it on DVD who doesn't should. I don't you're a loser then, Bartek. I I go pizza. in John Jarrett's rape dungeon and think about what you've done. I have and Houses, Houses movie. I have Houses versus Authority on DVD. Yeah, and uh, oh, was, Fat yeah. Pizza versus Houses. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that. Who won? DVD. Oh, uh, it uh, ended with a to be continued. Oh uh, yeah, it kind of did. Excuse but... me. I asked a simple question. Who in Fat Pizza vs. Halzo's won? It, I was, say, it was like uh, starting when it said to be continued. Yeah, does it, say, does, plot twist, it's Swift and Shift Couriers who win? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I love that. So yeah, this Christ, is the bit that freaking. terrified me. I'm yeah. like, shit, dog. She's skinny. That was uh, what really so got you, me. So you, Ryan. All right, Bartek, stop picking on me just because you're fat shaming me. By the way, I just remembered. You know that um, you know at the movies um, with David and, David and Margaret, yeah, the they ref- Australian film critic. Um, they ref- they gave the first Wolf Creek four stars, but they actually refused to review Wolf Creek two. They thought it was too violent, so they actually refused to review it. What a bunch of pussies! Yeah, Greg McLean was not happy. He said, like, even if they hated it, I would have liked to have you know. I was curious. Is all I'm saying. I think Roger Ebert was also. Is that is him. that how Greg McLean sounds? Yeah, I, I, was, I don't know what he I said. was just curious. Yeah, he was just a little curious. I'm, I'm going to interview Greg McLean. Hey, Greg. Hey, what hey. did you think of David and Margaret not reviewing your movie? I like play school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what about David and Margaret not reviewing Wolf Creek 2? I ABC play school. No, but Wolf Creek 2, your <laughs> film. What did what did you uh, think about David and Margaret not doing it? I did not be changed. <laughs> okay. Uh, although David... Hey, da- David, David, what is it? Change Greg McLean's nappy. <laughs> oh, but I didn't want to. Tough. You didn't review his movie. Well, they could wipe his ass with the uh, the Australian because he uh, David did end up reviewing it in the Australian. Did you like it? Who was he doing um, an impression of? I'm trying to remember. Uh, <laughs> David Stratton. I, I don't think he liked it very much. He's the like, David and Margaret guy. More of the yeah? same. Right. Because there was one name that you were saying I had no idea who it was. It was like David. No, I know David and Margaret. Did you say, like, a third name there? Greg McLean is the director of the movie. Okay, I didn't know who that was. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to pay attention to these things, Bartek. You're supposed to be showing us and the audience that are listening to this, God forbid, that that this is not a British masterpiece and you don't even know the creator of the content. How can you be the defender of the undefendable? Because I put my pants. Greg Absolutely. McLean back... <laughs> Who knew that we had a third guest on the show? Greg, how are you doing? Second guest, but I'm doing good. No, third guest, because you're all, because we already had David Stratton. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I forgot true. about Get that. on with it, Bardo. What about Shane Warne earlier? Shane Warne was a figment guest. He wasn't real. <laughs> oh, okay, but this one's real. Yeah. So this is where you go. Oh, he's free. Yeah, there is light at the end of the tunnel. But then the, the dog save him. And then the dogs save him by going woof, 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 bark, splat, dead. And then dead. everyone cries because the dog's dead. No, it's no, not. No, 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 no. Fine. Stefan, this crazy. is the big thing. Mick Taylor doesn't cry. Yeah, he it's doesn't. true. It's true. Does Mick Taylor cry? Boys don't cry. Big girls do, though. I don't even know if Mick Taylor knows his dog died. I think he doesn't, but he think he will soon enough. <gasps> bum bum. Not bum bum bamboo. Bam. <laughs> bamboo. So, Bartek, 
Could you give me a rough estimation of where you thought the end of this movie was going in comparison to where it did go? Because Stefan is smiling at me going, don't even bring up the end. (laughs) So, I I guess I was thinking that he'd get a cross somehow, like after he whacks Mick Taylor or something. So, can I just stop um, you for a sec? The subtitles just said, fee fi fo fum I smell the oh, blood yeah. of an English porn. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, Not pom? No, porn. Because usually God. when R and N's close together, it looks like an M. That's, no, yeah, it I'm was sure porn. Pom. Well, he would have said pom. No, he said pom, but I think sometimes it's got it wrong. But go on, you were saying you thought he whacked him on the head? Look, I thought he was... Oh, that's that's nasty. I, I kind of remembered that um you know the thing at the start said based on a true story and like where would they get the information from? I feel like someone would have to reveal something and it would have to be Paul here. So somehow he was gonna get away from Mick, he's gonna smartly get across the bamboo by, I don't know, walking at the parts where there are no bamboo, just sliding his legs so he doesn't have to go high or anything. Um I wasn't expecting a jump cut. Or, well, fade to black and then fade in. Mmm. And, Stefan, we've been cock-teasing everyone, including you, about how you feel about the ending of this mm. movie. Do you tell us your feelings about the end. Okay, well, first of all, like, I guess I just thought that he was just going to kill him, because that m- makes sense. I mean, after after the fact that he hits him with a... Paul hits him with a hammer, you'd be pissed off enough. And he was saying just a few minutes ago, Oh, that fucking hurt! Fucking palm. And then this happens... Where it stays black for quite an extended period of time, actually. Yeah, well, you think um, the movie's over, don't you? You think, yeah. oh, is it the, this is the end? Headbutt. Maybe. And then you know he he's not a winner. He he, he didn't win. Like in he's like Donald Trump. There's there's no you're either a winner or you're a loser. There's no in between. Well, and unfortunately, he's 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 a loser. Well, see, here's the thing. I was actually quite surprised. I thought because of the first movie he says winner winner chicken dinner. I thought it was like. You're not a winner. You're out, and he's gonna. And I thought he was gonna say chicken dinner, and then oh, like that'd be an awesome ending. And I <laughs> actually thought, okay, he's got a no. It's gonna say chicken dinner on it, right? And then it's like no loser. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I mean, high school taunting. I mean, that's silly. <laughs> that he, primary school taunting. It, it's silly when you think about it. Like he just drives into the middle of like the town and just knocks him in the middle of the, drops him in the middle of the well, road with a loser. Maybe he did kill him, and all of this. And all of reality is Mick Taylor's dream of what if he didn't kill him? Mm. Possibly. We but... are Mick Taylor's dream. So, you're not a big fan of this ending. But like, no. how do you feel about the, the, the title, the, 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 the uh, writing at the end that says that he, he's, he, he got deported and he's <laughs> a permanent resident in a mental home? How did you feel about that? That he had a complete nervous breakdown? Didn't say that he was deported. Don't yes, it yeah. does. Next, it? next bit. Next, next bit. bit. It says he's deported back to England, and uh, you know he had a oh, okay, yeah. breakdown. Deported to England and placed in full time care at Ashworth Hospital. And here's the joke. Ha ha. In which he's a permanent resident in. Ha 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 ha. You find that funny, I guess. No, it's like you know because it's that kind of thing about like you know. It's like emphasizing you know how bad his mental breakdown. But is. also, it's kind of like he's forever going to be in England. Ha ha ha! Mick Taylor wins the day in that terms of getting rid of someone from the Australian landscape once more, but in a different fashion. See, here's my problem. I think this is why the movie doesn't work. I think it's that end bit. Like this bit is a recall moment to the, the first, first one. one. Which is great, because it's kind of like he keeps walking and he fades into the Australian outback. And it's sunny. And it's sunny. Like most of the movie. And I feel like the ending of the main character being institutionalised, off-screen and all that, it's kind of a recall to the first one as well. But I feel like it doesn't work in this case, because I feel like, yes, the Australian... The, this character, this main character, has gone through a lot of traumatic ordeal, but I just don't believe, from what I saw from the actor's portrayal and whatever that this character would have a complete mental breakdown and be institutionalized for the rest of his life. I felt like, I felt like with the character that we had viewed in the movie, yeah, it was traumatic for him, but I didn't feel like it would drive him to complete breakdown in the way that the writing has you to to believe. I don't, I just don't buy it. Well, it's like a lot of things like as well, like he was a probable suspect. So for, a few months he would have been... People would have um, accused him of, you know, murdering innocent people. Yeah, he might have even told them about the body that he Yeah, and he's there. missing fingers and... It's... Yeah, I guess. Uh, that was just something that didn't work for me. 
Uh, I think that is the main thrust of why this film isn't as popular as it could have been. What about you, Bartek? Do you think... What makes this an unappreciated masterpiece? Well, if I'd saw the first movie, then I could make that comparison. But as a standalone film... <clears throat> Maybe there were more people like me who hadn't seen the first one and they just thought, oh, it's a sequel, I won't get it if I watch it, so maybe I'll avoid that. And for people who did see the first one, uh, you told me this before we started recording that the first one had a more gritty cinematography, like a uh, filter and stuff like that. Yeah, lower budget look. So maybe they thought that this cleaner look just wasn't cutting it, it was too modern, too Hollywood. And... I, uh, uh, just Irish guys played by Nick English, which seems counterintuitive. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So do you want to go straight into your review, Bartek? Yeah, a review and a rating. So we're going to give our own review and a, a rating of what we feel of the movie. Bartek is already on a flow, so let's go with you first. Yeah, so like I mentioned, like what we've established here, Mick Taylor is a despicable villain, but his portrayal in this movie is probably one of the most noteworthy things about it. And probably the... I'll ask this to Safan, probably the most noteworthy thing about the whole franchise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I guess that's kind of a given, like give and take with horror movies like the villain the recurring villain is going to be the thing like freddy jason uh, michael myers leatherface stuff like that um and yeah and this one difference from that is it's a very australian character and he definitely displays a lot of australian qualities <laughs> like that whole laid-back attitude saying mate saying cunt <laughs> saying um that's Blood. another word he uses. Palm, I guess. A very Australian character, and uh, he's got that kind of interesting old school kind of patriotism, nationalism for his country. Um, There's three marks. Just Mark Holman. Holman four Harris, marks, Mark actually. Four, sorry. Four marks. Mark. Oh, yeah, Mark McKenna. There you go. Yeah, yeah it was four. So you were saying about it? Um, Australian character. But the old school Australian character. And. But he, he doesn't go that whole... Go like, I mentioned Looney Tunes earlier as a joke. He doesn't go full crazy like that. It, it, he keeps it very dark, very kind of realistic, and very threatening. And I, I don't know if Hollywood is fully aware of who John Jarrett is, but if they did, I think they would use him in a lot more things. Oh, yeah. Mm. I think He's they're brilliant. just not ready for John Jarrett. They are, they've got to be ready for John Jarrett. Um, maybe they can just watch some more Better Homes and Gardens, they'll just see, like, a little more of what he can do. Um, but, yeah, as a film, it's, it's great, it's got a lot of songs in it to <laughs> keep you going with yeah, the flow. Yeah, coming up right here. Um, it, ha it doesn't have that whole decoy protagonist thing of the two German characters. Like, most horror movies... Uh, well, Hollywood horror movies, you've got a lot of unlikable characters that get killed, whereas this one, much like I've, I've been talking this whole time about, you know, John Jarrett's portrayal as Mick Taylor, realistic characters, likable characters, even though, like we said earlier, oh, they had sex, so they're gonna die, but it wasn't, like, naughty sex. It was nice sex, I'm sure. <laughs> I was there, I should, I should... Yeah, it was clean for, like, Germans. I clean guess. for Germans. Oh, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't like, Scheiser German. sex or anything like that. <laughs> My um, favourite kind of sex. Shiza sex. <laughs> you know what shiza is, right, Ryan? Yep. Poopy. Yeah. Like what? I don't speak German, but I mean, no, I do speak German. <laughs> I don't speak German either. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of putting thoughts together now. I I'll go straight to my rating. I give this movie two rifles in the cabinet. You really are obsessed with the rifles in the cabinet. Safan, let's hear from you, the man who who wanted to do this movie, the man who loves this franchise and loves everything Australian films except for all the Australian films that he hasn't seen. I just love it. I really, he really likes Australian content. Oh yeah, have you seen any like lists of fifteen million Australian movies? Nope. It's got to be good, us. So give us a review and a rating of your choice. Okay, Stephon. well I'm going to. Uh, Put ten bodies uh, around f ten, uh, not lifeless bodies, very lifeful <laughs> bodies in front of us, and I am going to shoot seven of them mm -hmm. with a rifle <laughs> from a very far away distance in a white van. Uh huh. And uh, so seven out of ten, that's a pretty good score. That's your rating, right? Yes, right. yes. That's so a score. It would have been it would have been better if I didn't in I didn't enjoy the that loser ending. I thought that was kind of silly. 
And uh, but I did like the things I did like was of course um, you know it was a bit more action than the first one. I loved the bit with the the big red truck, um, and uh, I like that the quiz scene as well. What do you think Hollywood films can learn from that ending? Yeah. Ooh. Um, Big question is, what do you think this film can learn from that ending? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just felt like that whole thing was a bit lame. Just don't do a lame ending. There you go. That's you he, hear he, that, Greg McLean? He, he don't do became, a lame ending. He just became like a little pr- primary schooler, man. Like a little primary school into loser. He might as well just like um, had a picture of him like holding like the L up to his forehead too. But that that and also um, that that bit at the end when he walks off into the, like the sun. You know that was obviously a callback to the first one as well. Mm. Do you remember that that one, Ryan? With um, yeah, he's walking to the sunset in the first movie, and it was like freaky music, if I recall. Yeah. Were you freaked out then? Because I thought that was really effective, that shot. Oh, it's an effective shot. I wasn't yeah. freaked out, but I'm like, oh, this guy just disappeared. Yeah. And then the second one is just like, yeah, he's just casually walking. And I think that's the difference between the first and the second one. Yeah, the f- second one, you know, it does incorporate comedy. And it's very casual. It, it gets the Australian casual nature more into it, while the first one is more the horror. In the first one, when, when he's like, it's, you know, the whole chicken dinner head on a stick thing, like, you know, he's... Like, it's... What he's saying is like it's humorous to him, but to us, it's just like messed up. It's 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 really freaky. So the second. strength of this movie is it's funnier. Yeah, the second one's definitely funnier. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think of the the loser part, the bit that I'm oh, not a fan of? Oh well, we we we, we yeah, you know, I didn't think it worked necessarily. Bartek, he's a big fan of endings. Look, I don't know if you guys know this, so if you buy this book called the Dictionary. <laughs> You'll realise that the opposite of winner is loser. Mm. No, it's dinner. So he was playing on the fact that he's the winner and Paul is the loser. Brilliant. That's what it meant, guys. Come on. If you'd studied English in English, you'd know this. What's your preferred ending, though? Look, anything that uses good English is good. I would. There you go. He, he nailed it on the head if there. The, if the ending was better, I would have shot an extra... Lifeful body, and he, then but it wasn't better. It was just really good. It was perfection. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you my 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 quick review and a quick rating yes. of my choice. I I would say that this movie is an experience to see in itself. It's a standalone film. Yet seeing the first one does help build up the character of Mick Taylor, give you a better understanding. But as a standalone movie, it is a colorful, vibrant-looking movie. To say the least, isn't it? I like how I'm the one who saw it as a standalone movie. I didn't even mention that in my review. Yeah, well, I'm going to be, I'm Bartek. It's a standalone yeah. movie. Now back to me. It's a standalone movie, but it's colourful, vibrant to look at. It's well shot, well choreographed. All this, the action is intense, as well as the gruesome horror and the overwhelming, uh, overwhelming menace of you know of John Jarrett's performance is just off the chain he is the guy who carries both the movies on his shoulders but in the second movie the actor Ryan Core who plays Paul really does carry the piece as well i don't feel like it's just John Jarrett wheeling the movie by himself but there's Ryan Core there to help. There aren't many characters in the movie, but there are many characters in the movie. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's impressive that characters who aren't around for the whole time, and Ryan Core, he didn't appear until just before the halfway point. Yeah, and it is a movie that does send chills down the spine. We don't usually do horror movies, but since it is October time now, we're going to be doing a bit more of a scary kind of themed thing here on the show, and this is a perfect starting off point. It's Australian, and it's icon- it is from an iconic movie. It's a sequel to an iconic movie, but it itself isn't iconic. And that may be because of the loser ending, <laughs> or it may be because it may be too smart, too intellectual, and too funny for those people who are just, you know, your brain dead horror fans. But true horror fans know that this movie is great. If I have to give it a rating, if I had to, Bartek, if I had to, Stefan, and if I do. had to, Ryan, you do, Ryan, if I had to give it a rating, you do. I, I do have to, mm-hmm. yep. I would give it a. Uh, I would give it uh, John Jarrett's dick out of Mick Taylor's love for dick. Sponsored by Better Homes and Gardens. Sponsored by Dick's Home for Gardens. Better Homes and Orgies. So, there were people on IMDb, surprisingly, who wrote reviews for this 
Now, I often read reviews that uh, show the positive and negative sides of the movies. Some uh, echo back what we have been saying, and others bring up points that we may not even have thought of before. So I'm going to leap straight in. This first review is a bit of a, a bit of a long one, but it is worth it because I feel like it's a very concise review. It, it gets across what the themes of the movies are, and it kind of explores what works and what doesn't. And it's a seven-star review called Not as Terrifying as Its Predecessor, but Still a Fun, Gruesome Ride. And this was written last year in 2015. So a bit of time has passed since the movie had come out. Now, a warning, there are spoilers in this review, so <laughs> be careful. I'm a huge fan of the original Wolf Creek. Mick Taylor cemented himself as one of the best horror villains of all time. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> he doesn't wear a mask. He's not invincible. He doesn't have any superpowers. He doesn't need any of that. No, this guy is a hunter. A straight-up Australian outback sharpshooter with weapons up the wazoo. Thing is, he hunts tourists. Any poor bastard wandering around the wide open plains of Australia better not cross paths with the guy because he'll kill them in the slowest, most degrading way possible. He thrives on fear and wants to squeeze as much life out of each one of his victims before letting them die. His smirk is chilling. His laugh is sinister. He's a sick, sadistic psychopath, and he's absolutely captivating to watch. The thing about Wolf Creek is that it focused on these three backpackers who were going to the Wolf Creek Crater, or whatever, well, or, 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 or whatever, but their car broke down, so some guy in a truck comes by and offers them a lift. Turns out this guy is Mick Taylor, and after a brilliantly tense campfire scene where they are all having a drink and a good laugh, he poisons them and then proceeds to do <laughs> vile things. Excuse me? Yeah, that's what happens. He poisons them. <laughs> he, like, he drugs them. What made it so terrifying is that we knew these characters. Oh, sorry, is he talking about the first movie? Yes, he's going oh, over the first one. What made it so terrifying was we knew these characters. They had chemistry. You believed they were friends. You were on this adventure with them. So when the shit, and they use, like, you know, they use an asterisk for the eye there, so who knows what it could be. It could be shot. So when the shot starts happening, it gets right down disturbing because you feel for these people. In Wolf Creek 2, the focus is almost entirely on Mick Taylor. It's literally just a day in the life of Mick Taylor, which I don't have a problem with at all. But there really isn't a clear protagonist we can root for during a large portion of the movie. At first you think it's a German couple since we follow them around for the first act until they set up a fire that catches Mick's attention. Then the guy gets killed. And the girl runs and runs and runs until she reaches the road. And this is where we are introduced to our real protagonist, Paul. He almost runs her over but quickly stops, lets the girl in his car and hauls ass all out of there. But of course Mick catches up. Things happen and it ends up becoming a cat and mouse game between Mick and Paul. I love they don't even talk about the girl anymore, it's like things happen. Paul is a really good protagonist, though. He's a British tourist who is just who was just driving through Australia, Australian wilderness until he finds the girl in the street. Then things start heading south for the guy. Paul is a sympathetic character because he was genuinely just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Even Mick reminds him that he wasn't a, his primary target, but Paul interfered with his hunting, so now... He's in his crosshairs. The psychological warfare between Mick, now between Paul and Mick near the end was riveting. And the actor who played Paul did a phenomenal job, despite having such little character development to work with. It's definitely a fun ride. There are some cheesy moments like Mick riding a horse with the sun going down behind him. <laughs> but overall, it has the same thick, brooding atmosphere as the original Wolf Creek. It's just told from a different perspective. It's the same type of extreme, over-the-top sadistic horror as the original. So if you don't like that stuff, then steer clear. But if, you do, but if you did like the first one and want to see some more of Mick Taylor, Wolf Creek will give you exactly that. 
You know what? I'm kind of suspicious of this guy. I actually 100% agree. Of the I hundred viewer. Or? Yeah. <laughs> at, at one point, he said that there's when you're watching the movie, there's no clear protagonist. But when you're watching the movie, you do think that it's the German couple. Like you do think that. You, mm. You're not like yeah. these guys aren't the protagonists. Why are we watching them? <laughs> I think he had some outside force. Maybe a friend. Maybe he read up about the movie that said who the main character was, and he was confused by the fact that they didn't appear until or, later. Or, this guy's Mick Taylor. Or this guy, maybe this guy made the movie. Yeah, Greg it's Greg McLean all over again. I personally 100% agree with that review. For well, the most part. You'll, you'll agree with the next one. It's also a seven-star review, just simply entitled Enjoyable. From 2014, so when the movie came out. <clears throat> I saw the first film during schoolies. And it felt like it went for 20 minutes. I don't recall any part of it from that, apart from that wicked snicker Mick puts on. (laughs) Going into the second movie, going to the second movie was like going in blind. We all know what Wolf Creek is about, but I didn't know what to expect. Remembering the premise of the first one, no, no way could they be the same And they weren't. I was pleasantly surprised as I was hooked from the very start. John Jarrett is truly superb in this role. He's menacing and pulls off off crazy perfectly. Ryan Kaur was another good choice. Good actor and also very good looking. Which always helps. It was definitely a film of cat and mouse. The cat being Mick Taylor. The final 30 minutes was definitely a step away from the first film completely. It provides the viewer a more in-depth look into the menace and serial killer antics of Mick and a chronicle of his hobby. The ending was also brilliant. Simple, yet punches you right in the face. There were parts during the film that were a bit comedic. I found this not to be a bad addition to lighten up the heavy themes of the film. However, it did throw off the pace and unsettling tone. Also, also the music choices were questionable. I found myself looking over to my friend a few times during these parts, laughing awkwardly out of place and saying, That was a bit weird. Or, interesting song choice. Bit lame, though. My main criticism of the movie would probably be the hyperinflated racist Australian character of Mick Taylor. However, in saying that, I guess that is why he is so crazy and so easy to hate. I'm glad I saw it. I was thoroughly entertained. Are you not entertained, Patrick? This guy had a problem with a racist character? So, this next one's also a seven star. It's from 2016, the 5th of June. Written from Valhalla. 2016 Valhalla. Yeah. Okay. The yeah, location. The, the, Val, the, the, the location is Valhalla. <laughs> it actually is. So they died by Mick Taylor, I assume. Don't know if anyone will like it, but I sure had a good time. <clears throat> I caught wind of this, and I genuinely loved John Jarrett's performance. And despite the original being considered a straight-up horror movie, I knew this one was leading, leaning, leading more towards it being a black comedy. I haven't seen the original, but I know it's like the single cash cow in Australian fiction. The rest are bad reality TV shows. As I said, I haven't seen the original, but I quite enjoy this one. The plot, Mick Taylor, a true blue Aussie, casually murders people in the outback, but mostly leans towards tourists because of his racism. And well, Outback Australia is a place with huge stretches of nothing. But enough of that, I guess. We then cut to two German backpackers going around the Australian Outback and run into Mick, and he kills the man, but the woman manages to find an English tourist happening to be driving on that corner of the mostly... or or, or in that corner of mostly desert, three quarters the size of America. I might be wrong about the exact size, but my point is clear. (laughs) And then they just go... (laughs) <laughs> the English tourist has to run away from Mick, but even when he thinks he's shaking him off, he finds a way to catch up to him. What is a problem with the mo- What is a problem with the movie? In a movie with ridiculous scenes I hate, 
that the movie claims to be based on real events. I can see how it was inspired by them, with Mick Taylor being very similar to real-life Australian serial killer Ivan Malat, in the sense that he also murdered tourists and put them in remote locations, but as far as anything else goes? It just seems little bits and pieces rather than, yes, this happened in exactly the same way it did here, but it's clear this movie puts an emphasis on black comedy, so it's clear that it's not a true story. If anything, if anything, it should have said inspired by, because that, would, that way it would work. The glue that holds this movie together is John Jarrett. He looks like he's having the genuine time of his life with the role. I would also give praise to other actors too, and I'll say this movie probably has the blackest comedy while still being funny. It succeeds. For me, anyway. To laugh at things that were meant to be funny while also thinking, I think I might be horrible. I don't think that the cinematography is that bad. That's just like a sentence by itself. I don't think the cinematography is that bad. Whether or not I'd suggest... Whether or not I'd suggest it's worth watching is a genuine mystery to me. It is a pretty good horror slash comedy in my opinion, but I don't see the humour resonating with everyone else. I'd say some of it stands okay as a horror movie as well as as well, but that depends on what scares you. John Jarrett, however, does more than enough to make up for the complaints I have. His performance is just so delightfully hammy, it does it does get entertaining enough so that any parts that aren't as good as uh, aren't as good is almost instantly forgivable every time he delivers a line, which is the perfect. Uh, and that's the end of the review. But that is just like the perfect way to describe John Jarrett. Is basically any time the movie slows down, John Jarrett's there to pick it back up. <laughs> I love it when people try to explain the whole based on a true story thing. Like that joke probably wasn't told in the real events. <laughs> We got the last review here from 2014. Straight off. It's 10 stars called oh. Fun, Fun, Fun. <laughs> minus spoilers. And then it's, uh, that's the title. What? Minus spoilers? Yeah, Fun, Fun, Fun. Minus spoilers. Oh, minor. I think it said minus. Minus spoilers. No, minor. Minor. <clears throat> so this is, like I said, this is the only 10 star review one I've got here. So <clears throat> here we go. Might I say it's also written from someone from the United Kingdom. So just, you know, take that in mind. And their, their username is Snaggletooth. Well, so it's a pom. <laughs> you know it is. Okay, this is this is how it goes. Many people were hugely disappointed by the original Wolf Creek, largely because it sold itself as the most terrifying film ever made, which turned out to be nonsense. I ordered the unrated version online here in the UK because I wanted to see it in full. I have an intense hatred for all things BBFC. But even that was limp and uneven. That said, the tourist-hating killer within definitely had something going for him, and I wasn't totally adverse to watching him again on a second outing, so it was with some low expectations I approached WC2, and my was I pleasantly surprised. It looks as if they had a major rethink of the film this time, and while there was some humour in part one, this time it's amped up to ten. I laughed many times at the dark comedy Wolf Creek has now become, but this may depend on what your sense of humour is like. Mine's a little twisted. As the laughs always accompany some gory scenes, there are one-liners while a penis is lopped off, where a field of kangaroos get wiped out, some Germans get offed, and as fingers are removed with a grinder. It's bloody fantastic. And the previous attempt at being all serious has been left behind with fun being the driving force now. Honestly, this is the most fun flick I've seen this year, and after three viewings, it didn't lose its charm. I know many horror fans will probably avoid this movie because of being let down by part one, but you'll be missing a true gem this time. Check it out. A new horror anti-hero is born. <laughs> anti-hero. <laughs> anti-hero. He's wow. an anti-hero. <laughs> He gets rid of the tourists, but, you know, it's kind of still mean. I mean, for certain, for certain groups of people, maybe. He's Making an, Australia beautiful, keeping Australia beautiful. He is an anti-hero. And aren't we all anti-heroes at the end of the day? Even Hitler, anti-hero. <laughs> Mussolini, anti-hero. Genghis Khan, anti-hero. I'm, sure, I'm sure they all killed some. Freddy Krueger, 
ants hero. <laughs> I mean, good, good, good detection there of him being an anti-hero. But that's it, guys. We've talked about Wolf Creek 2. And this is just a starting off point for us this month because we're going to be covering a few more gruesome movies or a few more movies that crawl under the skin or movies that involve the supernatural. Things that we like to call, I, I guess it's the spooky month. Yeah. Also, um, for, I guess, Wolf Creek fans or future Wolf Creek fans who enjoyed this movie, I mean, uh, it's on, both the movies are on Stan, so if you don't live in Australia, Stan is basically the Australian Netflix. We do have Netflix too, by the way. Um, but it's yeah. not on there. Yeah. I tried to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, the TV series is on Stan as well. It's uh, it's Stan original. So, Stan. And it's very we're not sponsored by anyone. Yeah, but I'm just Stan, saying we're not sponsored. I'm just saying because I enjoyed Stan, it. Stan, if you want to sponsor us, that would be fine. And there would just, yeah, be, some cool. guy, there would just be some guy called Stan being like, fuck, I, I might <laughs> hate something. But if you do live in the US, I heard that later this month, actually, hopefully just in time for Halloween, is they're going to release a series on the Pop Network, which is like some cable subscription. So like if me. you like popcorn and yeah, get yeah, some yeah, yeah. of that out and watch it on the Pop? Yes, yeah, so that's for our American listeners. But yes, we've covered Wolf Creek too. Mm. I suggest, as always, check the film out and check out its predecessor as well. It is, they are both a fun time and a mo- and, the, and this movie, the second one, deserves to be appreciated mm. more. Uh, as always, you guys have been fantastic, amazing, wonderful listening people. You know, feel free to uh, give us a rating, uh, give us a review of the show, you know, and hey, you can give us uh, some uh, some suggestions for future movies that we could do because hey, if Stefan wasn't such a big fan of Wolf Creek, we may have never done Wolf Creek 2 on this true, show. True. Mm. And you know, you guys could have missed out and you guys might be sitting at home going, hey, where can I give these suggestions? Well, we have a Facebook page just called Spit and Polish Presents. If you haven't already liked that, do so. And, uh, you know, we have a little link there where you can leave movie suggestions. So feel free. But until next time, uh, remember to be kind to each other. Yep, you can drop us also a review on iTunes. You know, We've gotten about three of them so far, and that's cool. <laughs> Stefan, thanks again for coming on. We we love having you on for desert-based movies. Oh, Yeah, yeah we love having him on for desert-based. <laughs> that's true, that's Next true. movie has to be, I don't know what it will be, but... Uh, redo actually, Jack. yeah, <laughs> Mad Max, the, the third movie. Yeah. Also, no, everyone loves a that. movie that we did that you probably would have wanted to be on Wild Hogs. That's in the desert too. That's true, yeah. I love Wild Hogs. So, uh, yes, thank you, Stefan, for being on for another desert-related movie. Yeah, and you check guys... me out on iTunes, Watch Creek Backstage. Oh, yeah. ITunes. And Watch Creek Backstage Archives, if you like. Yeah, Stefan does his own uh, podcasting and interviewing show, so, uh, yeah, we'll leave a link to that as well. But, as always, be kind. Thank you so much. Yeah, hey, you're welcome. That's, yeah, welcome. Watch out for John Jarrett's dick. Oh, thank you guys. Damn. This is the blackest comedy, but not like Dave Chappelle. It's just quoting the review. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> <laughs>